Ah, well, we're back on one of our favourite topics tonight. Solar, PV, battery, all the revolution that's happening in the energy market. And it should be one of your favourite topics because it's coming to a rooftop near you. And if you're not installing it, are you going to be current? Hmm. Well, tonight's special guests know a little bit about it. We've got our local wholesaler who's also gone into solar and we're going to find out the challenges associated with that. And we've got a special guest who works for one of the biggest solar panel manufacturers in the world. And stay tuned to see exactly how solar panels are made from Q cells. Now he possibly has the easiest job in the industry because he just goes, solar panels, how many would you like? Oh, that was a good one. It went straight to you. Oh, I love it when they do that. An instant mistake at the start of it. So thank you very much. That means we must be live. We're fortnightly live here on Facebook. So you might be joining us on our Facebook stream or you're joining us as a regular viewer. We have many, don't we, on the YouTube. So that's what we're up to. So thank you very much for joining us. We know there's other things that you could be watching tonight, but I can't think of any better than sitting down with two grey male and stale presenters, okay, and watching maybe something on the football. But instead we've got us, vibrant, at the front cutting edge of the industry and when we talk about cutting edge it leads me nicely into tonight's title what we're we talking about tonight Gordon it is yes yeah, solar installation which we did cover a few weeks ago but we're uh, we're not talking technical tonight we're talking business Gary okay money okay so yeah. is, is it a secret I don't think it is a secret is it where, where are we going to see you know close your eyes and open them in five minutes time not necessarily any years time where are we going to see all this solar installations popping up I did a little uh, survey today when I was out in the car. Right. Yeah, I reckon about one in 20 houses at the minute. Oh, wow. Journey I, went. I was counting them through, obviously paying attention to the road at the same time. But as I glanced sideways, yeah, about one in 20, I reckon. Yeah, but I don't think it stops there. I think commercial, industrial, uh, the other areas where we're going to... It's going to be everywhere, isn't it? We're going to be... It's going to be unavoidable. However, before we get into that, let's thank the wonderful sponsors of this fortnightly live stream for allowing us to come to you on Facebook and on the YouTube. So we'd like to thank the following people. We'd like to thank our headline sponsor, the Laseco Group, that bring us great brands such as Laseco Lighting, uh, Sync EV, so BG Sync EV, and the British General brand, so thank you very much for your support, as well as our good friends down in Doncaster and Aaron and the team, so Doncaster Cables. We'd also like to thank My Energy, recent award-winning My Energy as well, with their EV charger, which is just behind your shoulder, and I've gone and forgotten the last one. Mm, that would be uh, Luden Pallet Zone. Well Very done, good. yeah, and where are they based? They're in, the, it, it's the Italy of East Essex, or Braintree, as we knew. And speaking of people who are far away places, Joe Robinson is tuning in, Gary. No. From his holiday in Margate. Margate, yes, yeah. the sunny Margate, yeah. So, yeah, Joe has ventured down. He hasn't taken uh, bits of poles and tarpaulin to erect his uh, accommodation like he's done many times before. He's actually got himself a little B&B &B down there. Yeah, so fantastic. little B&B &B in Margate. It, the Barney, not, isn't it, what we used to call it? Yeah, it is, but it's not on the seafront. So, you know. you know those little side rows, the ones yeah. where you, you sort of stumble around trying to find the odd antique shop. Maybe there's an old cinema up there. He's right at the top of one of those steep cobbled hill as well. Yeah, I think the Villa Bella he mentioned. Yes, like yes, absolutely. When Del Boy. Mm. What, did, what was wrong with Denzel on that trip? Can you remember? Denzel. Denzel. So when they were down in the uh, the oh, Jolly Boys outing, infection, was it? what was it? Fungal infection. Fungal. So leave it in the comments because there's a great opportunity to start that first comment. When we were out the Jolly Boys outing, something was wrong with Denzel. So please put it in the comments if you can remember what was wrong with Denzel. He didn't get it right. So comments are really important to us if you're watching this live because they will help obviously drive the stream and we will answer as many as we go through. However, you might be watching on catch up on Facebook or on the YouTube. So again, leave those comments because that's where we've got to today. And we had loads of comments in when we had Griff from GTEC in. So that was the technical element of it, but there's a bigger backstory and we've got some wonderful guests, haven't we? Should we, we talk have. to introduce our we wonderful have. guests? Let's have a look. I think they're in the green room. We should get a cheeky wave off them, shouldn't we? So yeah. if we go to the green room, we should be able to see our guests. And who have we got? We have got, <laughs> we've got Ross Kent, who is Head of Sales, UK Nile for Q Cells. Right. And our local wholesaler, Darren right. Housen. Oh, the member representing our local wholesaler. Right, okay. Darren Housen, Oldfield okay. Electrical. You said Ross Kemp there, I thought, for a minute. I thought you'd, Ross Kemp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you'd mistaken the one for the uh, one of the brothers off that uh, EastEnders thing. Just because the guests might not have much hair tonight, Gary. <laughs> Doesn't mean you can confuse them for Kemp's. So. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. So, yes, uh, I, I don't actually know which ones they were either. So, that. We, we're digressing. So solar then, we think it's going to be absolutely everywhere. You've got a one in 20 count at the minute, but commercial and industrial are another massive areas and it's a massive opportunity, isn't it? Yeah, massive opportunity, yeah. And that's, and that's uh, yeah, certainly where, where 
I think people should be looking. I mean, there was a, there's a, a DNO we work with around here. They're predicting by 2040 or 2050, 10 years between people. In that window. Right. Yeah. You won't care about it and you'll be retired. Oh, thank uh, you. You're, uh, I'm not as kind with you on those things, am yeah, I? So yeah. thank you. You've managed to pass me into retirement. They're predicting by 2040, 2050, about 60% of the generation will take place at a local level. So okay. you want, the national grid is like the backup. So when we say local level, so we're not just talking about domestic, are we? So that's where our focus is, isn't it? because we pay that bill, don't we? Yep. So we get that one dropping through. So we're constantly focused on what it's going to cost us personally and solar's our charge. But then we start thinking about business. We had a great thought today about Doncaster Cables, didn't we? Okay, that business is pretty much running when the, when the daylight is available. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So would, would battery solar suit them? Well, it could do, isn't it? And that's what, we're, that's what we're going to dive into, because obviously people think of solar, but then storage goes with it and how the energy market works, isn't it? At times of the day when those wind turbines are spinning away on a hot day and there's no way to put that energy, you've got to either take it or pay them to stop generating. Yeah, absolutely. You've got to, yeah, that's, that's totally key. But again, it's managing that process, isn't it? How many people want to be managing between what the weather forecast is going to look like, whether they're going to get enough energy for their average consumption, is it going to be an average day, and then how much energy you'd need to put into your battery maybe if you were buying it in. That's a, that looks like a massive juggle, doesn't it? That looks like four apps to me and a ton of grief. Well, hopefully we'll have that clarified tonight with our guests. I think we're time to bring our guests in, Gary, because they should know more about this than we do. Well, they can't know any less, can they? <laughs> but it's time to welcome in Ross Kent from Q Sales and Darren Housen from Oldfield. <laughs> See you again. Ross Kemp. I'll see you again. Ross Kemp. I've done you there. I've Everybody gone. thought, yeah. I've been saying Tim all day, so I've been mixing the names up. Uh, I just yeah. Ross Kemp's haircut with me, that's all. Yeah. Yeah. Which of the Stathams are you? Yeah, that's what I want to know. So, uh, yeah, fantastic. So, we'd like to start off background. I guess we'll, we'll, start with, uh, we'll start with you, Tim. For 60 seconds, we don't want, we don't want to fold yeah. Ross. <laughs> again. I'm so pleased with that. I was like <laughs> loving that mode. Yeah. I didn't want you to correct him. I just wanted to carry on making the mistakes. So ask Tim the first question then, Ross. I will, Ross. Yeah. <laughs> Ross, yeah. 60 seconds, your background. Yeah, so I'm Tim Kent. And, uh, no, I'm Ross Kent. And uh, yeah, I, I began my career really in the uh, building industry uh, with Travis Perkins. And then a uh, newer family friend was starting up a renewable energy company and went and joined them in 2011 at the kind of height of the, the feed-in tariff, uh, quickly moved on from that. I was a bit on the tools at those times actually as well, um, but yeah, not so much on the electrical side, more mechanical. Uh, moved on to Rexel, I'm sure everybody's heard of Rexel. Uh, a couple of years with them on the distribution side, again focused on solar products and then began a career with, with Q-Cells. I've been with Q-Cells for nearly nine years now, so joined a, a PV manufacturer and that's where I've been since. And now I'm head of sales for uh, UK, Ireland, Scandinavia. Wow. As I said, the easiest job in the world because everyone wants solar. And how many do you want? Absolutely. You're giving the game away. <laughs> <laughs> and his next bonus, I think he's going to. Yeah. Yeah. And Darren? Are you yeah. sure? Do you want to confirm your name's Darren? Do I, open? I yeah. think last yeah, time okay. I checked yeah, on okay. my birth certificate, yeah. yes, it was definitely Darren. So, um, My background, I um, originally started off in health and fitness, which has slipped a bit over these last few years. Um, and always been sort of in and around Skipton. Um, I moved from the fitness industry back into sort of retraining to be an electrician. So I've been an electrician for maybe 10, 15 years and then um, then I now found myself in wholesale working for uh, Oldfield Electrical in Skipton. Um, I've served a bit of time on the wholesale side um, selling the, the standard electrical equipment and now I've moved into the, the solar department. So. And uh, yeah, things are, things are good. And we, we've had some interesting news down at Mastab. So if you joined us on the live stream there, actually you're on an accelerated career path because I thought I heard the word future director of the business. Well, I'm glad you yeah, heard yeah, that. And now it's, it's, now it's, it's out it's, there. It's, it's an escalator, yeah. isn't it? So yeah, I like yeah. the way you've moved through the section. You're yeah. in solar, which is probably the most exciting part of the business at the minute compared to maybe white plastic sockets. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and directorship is in your future, so it's good. Yeah, that's yeah, on really the horizon, so yeah. I'll, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's all good. Are you all right, Gordon? Have we got a problem? No, Rick was just telling us to park your laptop away from you. Oh, right. Okay, so not that's peaking, fine. not your like. <laughs> right, okay, trying to get some of those information. So that's, that's a little bit of 60 seconds of your background. Now, 
we didn't know part of yours, Ross, there. So we, we, we gave a whiff, didn't we? So already the audience are in a lovely position with a race wall coming up next, that you've got this actually practical background, okay? So we, we've been saying all day, so we've been struggling to get this one in as well. So we've been saying all day, we've got the, the dark player, the electrical background there, you've retrained, I love people that retrain. And then you try to play it down, and that makes logical sense. Yeah, I might, now I might these... be a dark horse for that. Yeah, though, just, I mean, you've right. properly yeah. spun us out today. So, and you're obviously at the forefront of that. So what does that mean we well, need, Gordon? We're going to put our guests to the test, Gary, and see how they get on with the electrician's challenge, which means, obviously, the viewers get the choice to join in. And, uh, yeah, so we want to... You've got to guess who... First, two things you've got to do. The first one is guess between our two guests. And who win? Well, who, it? who are Ross? Oh, are you sure? Are you sure there's Ross? Yeah, so or Tim or Darren. <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing you need is Ross or Darren. And then the second thing behind that name is what time you think they completed the challenge in. Now, right. the times at the minute range from 2 minutes 53 all the way at the top of the board down to... Carl Dakin at nine minutes fifty-four over there. So we've got the uh, we've got the graphics for that, Rick. There we go. So you got sixty seconds to get the times in. I think you're you're covering a bit of uh, pressure there, Ross, because I think the only person, the only Ross on the board, is right up there at the top. So if we're uh, we're that good, we're going to be looking right there. And you're tall enough to get up there as well, as we've had a lot of photographs together today where I look like I'm half the size of you. So that's going to be fun later on. So we're we're looking up there. So time should be coming in. So first of all, we're we going for non-dark player. Yeah, little bit of a background, you know, it's there in the thing. Oh, or retrain an electrician. <clears throat> yeah, I like it. Future director of the business. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, times are coming in. Times are coming in. Oh, people, are, people look like they're edging on the electrician side. Oh, are they? Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Oh, no, they've got a Ross one in there as well. Yeah, thanks, Mum. Oh, 425. Is that hours or minutes and things? Oh, Sean Dempsey there. Mm. Plenty of times going. Oh, yeah, people think this is going to be a quick one. But have you hoodwinked them, Gary? We're not like. Well, don't know. But again, remember to get your questions in. This is not going to be a sales pitch. It's about that bigger picture on solar, and we'll also see how the electrical wholesaler is helping service you in the solar industry, or not. Is your electrical wholesaler doing maybe yeah. what Oldfields are? Interesting, yeah. Uh, da, da, da. Azuri Electrical. Yes. A friend of yours. Yeah, absolutely. Down. It's over 60. You like this one? He's just done his solar course. Yeah. Wow. There you go. So, no no bloke... excuses for people now, yeah, is there? Well, if you see an opportunity, you see an opportunity, didn't you? You yeah. don't want to leave that money on the table, do you? Whatever age you are. Okay, then. So that's the Tom Dremel. Locked Plenty and loaded. I think you've still got a few. Oh, we don't even know who's going first, and I haven't seen any of the race wall. So this should be interesting. Maybe at this stage, if our other friends from Oldfield would like to move into the green room for us. So we've got a couple of uh, couple of other members of the Oldfield. These are future fellow directors, aren't they? Yeah. I like it, yeah. So maybe we can see them in the green room. If we just bring the camera in, they're just taking their seats there. I've had to apologise. So as we're looking at the screen there, on the left-hand side, give us a wave, Matty boy. So uh, Matty boy will give us a wave. So I've called him Matthew all day and he had to pull me to one side in the Indian restaurant to say, nobody calls me Matthew, everybody calls me Matty boy. So I've got that one. And in next to him is, uh, is Andy. So give us a wave, Andy. So yeah, that's it. That's their debut on the telly with no sound. That's about right for me. Let's roll the race walls. Here we go then. So who's up first? Do you, do you know who's up first? Who's going to be up first, Gordon? Who's yeah. it going to be? Oh, oh so yeah. Ross Kemp. Here we go then. So uh, the dark player on first. Yeah, absolutely nice pose there, down in the uh, the uh, Nick position when he's uh, kneeling down. Remember, and all the way back there when I got that name wrong, you've already murdered a few names tonight already. So how we go with the cables? Um, about two years ago. Something right. Talked, all right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, here we go. Oh, that's it. Oh. Friends and family at the weekend. <laughs> yeah. Try not. Is it every other yeah. week? All right. Lazy. Yeah. So um, <laughs> up we go then. So up to, and again, we, I think we both found this a bit of a challenge from the feedback I got from um, <laughs> from Rick. We're doing this, but this looks a good one now. That is a we're good end cool. you've got there. You had a few problems with your ends earlier on, didn't you, in the race wall? So I take it this might be one of your later ones. So good start. Right. I'm going to choose which tools we got. So we're in with the uh, Wago wire strippers, which are fantastic. Fantastic. They almost do the job for you. And just three connections in that consumer unit. Got a little wristwatch there. Is that a, is that a <laughs> manual one or is that one that would tell you maybe your phone's ringing? You want to tell me where the brown and blue go? Oh, oh, yeah, you said and you're an electrician. They're all yeah, umming and ahhing right. in the real world. That is a possibly the best face cam we've had. Not the best face, just the best <laughs> face cam we've actually had there. So it's good. You had your hair cut before you came on tonight. Is that correct? No, it's just windy outside. Right, OK. It looked like they added a little bit of sheen on the top as well, didn't they? So we had a little polish sir as well uh, as we were trimmed up. So we're going long on the protective conductor. I'll take it we're going to strip that one back. Yeah, are you going to connect that and then halve it? And that would be my way forward. Wow, you look like you know your way around a twin that socket. Was, that was actually a trick that I learned today, was that one? Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> on this six-week training course that we give for electricians retraining. So, uh, yep, yeah, so that was a, a good one. Back in with the tools. This is looking, yeah, it's looking pretty good. 
and what we're doing now. So yeah, we had a few issues with the socket out there earlier, didn't we, uh, Ross? We did. Yeah, we did. We did. Yeah, I thought at one point it was never coming off the wall. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so line connection, four, four to go, and we're, we're finished. This looks pretty competitive. So uh, I take it, Darren, you'll be looking up the leaderboard. Is that the idea? You, we were looking up there, um, it's rather than looking down. So uh, yeah, we tend to always play the slowest one first. So if you look at the, the run rate that we've had on this, Gordon. So uh, yeah, it'd be interesting. So there, is that it? Are we done? Oh yeah, folding back. Are the screws still where you left them? They are, so in we go. So just two 3.5 machine screws that you wouldn't believe uh, were. Five mil long. Yeah. Oh, there you oh, go. Yeah. <laughs> How much are they down at the oh, counter? Yeah. Well, if we go down, they have to pay for everything. Good time, here we go then. So here we go, so the smuggled in technical man. So uh, yeah, here we go. Bit harder for you, because obviously you're that tall, getting down there is a challenge, I understand yeah, that. Yeah. Neil and there were still halfway up the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And Neil and a bend. Do you look how much bend's in that bend? Yes, yeah. it's good. So um, here we go. So let's find the ends. There we go. So great. Out we come. Right. Much electrical experience behind you. I said you've got a mechanical background. Ross, have you got a brick? One? When you say of Travis, yeah, Burke, not, not too much. Yeah, yeah, I'm not. I'm not right. Right. Look at this. Oh, Look at this. Rectangle there. You wore the old sports sneakers as well to be a bit nimble around yeah, the consumer unit. Sense. Again, that is not at the right height for you either. So, um, oh, let's have a look. What we, yeah, what are we going there? Here we go. So we're uh, suspiciously looking for the correct tool. <laughs> we're rumbling through the undergrowth. Here we go. What's next? What's not coming next? naturally, Tim. Here we go. Yeah, you can so, see this. Yeah, it's not, 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 not as natural as it has been in the past, does it? So uh, are you turning that the correct way? So, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's be reminded a couple of times. times. All right, okay. Yeah. In with this thing, whatever this does. Okay, so it, it just choose the end of the cable off there. You look pretty good with that. So that's good. What's next? No, let's choose a different tool. Let's use this one. Okay. It's Protect great it. editing in here. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We had a lot of footage to take out, oh, no, so no, we're no, all right. So, <laughs> yeah, if you if you need some great footage, there's nothing better than a lot of it to go through. So, um, just uh, cleared out the devices. Yeah, <laughs> I'll see. You that, this looks good. So, socket was a bit of your nemesis, wasn't it? As you went through. Yeah, you did. I, have I'm some... the only person. Every, every time I've done this, it's been filmed. You know, I've never done this personally. So, oh, excuses. Uh, every, everything is on camera. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're like it. So you've never ever done any electrical work before. Only very minor DIY stuff. Yeah, be, so long wires, them on those socket. I must give a uh, scrap man's going to be happy again. So, okay. Yeah. So, uh, have we got a scrap? Would we? Would we better say now politically correct a scrap person? Is that what it is? Scrap I don't person? know. Well, well, I'm just saying statistically, the people who collect the scrap from here tend to be men. I'm not okay. saying there isn't a scrap person out there. Okay. I, I prefer yeah, scrap they. Scrap there. Yeah, it could be. Answers in the comments. Maybe that you've got something that can do that. I have a post person, yeah, delivering my mail. Yeah. Um, yeah, and when I say mail, I, I probably should say they're not mail. It's just the mail the post person is delivering. That could get you in trouble in a hurry, couldn't it? So we're down to the, the final connection. Oh, that's a nice wristwatch. That looks a little bit more classy. That doesn't tell you, does it, that someone's texted you? That's a salesman's wristwatch. Oh, I like it. Is it <laughs> what? Hand out, heavy watch. You know, we're, we're doing all right. Yeah. Yes, yeah, bonus. Oh, yeah. All these solar <laughs> panels there. Yeah, silver wedding ring as well to go with it. We've gone a matching watch to match. Yeah, oh, hello, hello. Oh, oh hello, TV hello. <laughs> Named underwear as well, we got a little glimpse of, didn't we? Yeah, oh dear. Putting every story oh time, dear, yeah. reminds me, the bushes at the front need right. trimming back. Yeah, here we go, so, here we go. So, we're, we're there. So, this this has been a struggle now again, isn't it? Can we, that cable in yeah, there. Can we get, yeah. Screws on the floor, <laughs> or was the best place to keep it? Everyone loves to squabble around on the Oh, hang on, keep the old good. Using and, the knee to put the socket on, yeah. that's a... Bit of Vienna, Vienna moment, that was, wasn't it? Bit of Vienna moment. So, board on the wall, you know, I love the way the edit is saving us from the, uh, the, the oh, yeah. almost, almost, yeah, I don't know. I can't read what it says in your pants. I thought they had Gaunt at the minute. I thought you borrowed them off Rick. Probably won't be watching that back again. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't got enough time to watch no, the, yeah, yeah. The, the, the editor's cut version <laughs> better than the actual uh, full version. Okay, so it's good. So we'll find out, will we later on in the show, the times? Is that what we're going to do? No, we're going to put them up there. No, we'll find out who's won. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, winners. yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. So who's yeah, yeah. Won on, the, on the tape, but we're going to put them on the board. Is anyone, uh, Darren, do you have anyone on that board? Uh, I think I just need to be beating Mark. Oh, Mark. Mark at TIS. Yeah. Oh, well, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on. I don't think Bring Anne Cam in. Let's have a look where lovely Mark is. Mark is possibly one of the nicest people I've ever got to spend. So you've set yourself at a dizzying height of just climbing <laughs> above Mark there. OK, now, now I understand, obviously, that would be fantastic. And you've set really a low banner there to, to run. A again, aspirational, I would suggest for you, Ross, to get anywhere near Mark. OK, so we'll see how we go. So we're, we're first up. Do you, do you want anyone on there, Sonny? 
Well, you'll know Griff. He's, he's so. Yeah, I'm he's not setting my sights that high. I mean, if I'm on that board, I'll be happy, I think. Yeah, right. Okay. Well, that's, well, wow. we'll start with you and Darren. You, you did this in. Drum roll, please. Five minutes. Yeah, which means, oh, I'm working down here now. Five minutes and 20. Big Rick. Big Rick, which is always on. Just above Dan McCowden at the Rewired Agency. Oh, we've got a similar haircut. Yeah. Similar look. Larry Soper there down at Turtley. And, Larry uh, Soper. Ross, you might not want to change your name to Tim now. Um, right, well, I'm going to have to work hard here, guys. Oh, he stood up. Look yeah, at the size of his. Hang on, hang on. Yeah. Ray, Ray Justin, yeah. look at his. He's up. He's we're up. Nearly, he's well, <laughs> well, stood up and just crawled around. We're nearly over there. Yeah. How close were we nearly over there? We were four seconds from being over there. Oh. Nine minutes and 50, which is like, oh, all the way down there. It's safe. <laughs> so it's just, uh, just, hang on. You know, I've, I've got a bad back. Oh, dear, mate. And Mark goes up a place. Mark must be chuffed to bits there. Lovely, Mark. Ross, yeah. I did tell you there'd be a Ross at the top and the bottom of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, <laughs> and, uh, absolutely. yeah, yeah. I've, I've really Ross slowed sandwich. down my time enough to make sure that happened. <laughs> It was great fun, and we, we thank you ever so much for obviously taking on that electrician's challenge. So somebody's won, and that means you won't get your prize delivered anytime soon. So that's the the new thing I think that we're doing on those. If you're if you're waiting on a prize, please make sure you leave that in the comments, and I'll let uh, I'll let Joe know that you're waiting for your prize. Mm. It's good, good fun. Thank you very much for, for doing that. So yeah. I think we're into it now, aren't we? Yeah, you've yeah. got bragging rights in Oldfield Electrical now. Yeah, we'll yeah. have to uh, send them, send the others down. Chop people's fingers off to make sure they don't come down. And, that <laughs> one, so. and you know, actually, I mean, give me some rocks. You're the fastest solar panel manufacturer on that board. Yes, presently. Yeah, I think That's... he's probably the tallest person on that board. He could be. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah. How tall are you? Six four. Yeah, six I'm six four. four as well. Yeah. Yeah, so, so we're, uh, it's a quite deceiving. We are similar heights. Yeah, it's yeah. quite deceiving. You, you I obviously always stand in a different position. If we stand side by side, I bet we, we, we match up. I yeah. carry not with. No, <laughs> oh, <laughs> he's right. Okay, so here we go then. So, for, so let's. We've we got a video to play to start. We have. Off? I mean, yeah. Q cells, obviously, uh, huge global solar panel manufacturer and yes. inverters and batteries. Now the whole ecosystem into a lot of stuff. Yeah, and um, been going for a long time. Mm. Since 1999, and uh, yeah, been with the business for a few years myself, and we're we're growing. We're a big global brand, so yeah. Yeah, that's, 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 yeah definitely one of the names out. And you sent us a corporate video along. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Before you rush off and do anything else tonight, it's a corporate video with a twist, isn't it? Well, people sent that video through, so we thought we'd best just edit it down a little bit and yeah, add a little touch to it. So let's just touch. look at the, let's just learn a little bit about QSL and more the solar power market. How exciting it is. <laughs> I think the world is changing for the better. And I think Q-cells are the people that can make it happen. Here in Skipton we have boats, and those boats have solar. I wanted to generate electricity myself and get the electricity my family needed. This was the system I wanted. Now I don't claim to be an expert, but I'm pretty sure you can't generate electricity from wine. But maybe things change when the glass is as big as it is there. It's more than just, you know, selling solar panels. It's like learning what's behind it. We went with uh, Q-Cells brand because I know the brand and I've trusted it. been around Q-Cells for a long time, having been in the, in the solar industry. We mentioned boats, but we've also got reservoirs. Q-Cells came through with the panels. Right on time, didn't delay the project in any way. Look at them ladders. To be fair, why work harder when you can work smarter? So we were really pleased with that. Well, who even needs scaffolding? Oops. Japan is a very strong world. It's 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 a very strong world. Now, Skipton isn't the first place you think of when it comes to natural disasters, but we are actually sat on the Craven fault line. Perhaps you can see it behind me. What I loved about Q-Cell's solar is their efforts to bring more technology to the market at an affordable price. Guys, now we're talking Yorkshire. Natürlich können Sie jede Energie verwenden. Es gibt mengenweise verschiedene Energieversorger, aber Kusels liefert 100% saubere Energie. Deshalb verwende ich Kusels. 
I'm gonna be continuing to live on this planet and I would love to see that change and that push towards green energy because it's our future. Even though we've had challenges in the past, we're still seeing effects of climate change. I wanna see that for our future generations. It gets all the best segments. You know, we've, got, we've got a Rick's Tall Tom coming up, so there are people out there that absolutely love Rick's Tall Tom. But look at the pressure he's under every time Daddy Joe does something different now on nearly every show. So fantastic. I enjoyed that. Yeah, well, I think that gave a, a flavour of the solar market. There's loads of countries going through the same transition. Yep, I, I love the tweaks there. You know, bringing a bit of Yorkshire to that very corporate video. So, yeah, big fan of that. Oh, well, we're available for that all the time, just pep up people's corporate videos. But interesting, what I loved about there was the Americans working on the roof without the scaffolding. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You'd yeah. have that down yeah. perhaps in other Are your countries. customers doing that? Not that I'm aware of. I'm, <laughs> sure. I'm, sure, I'm sure there is. Yeah, I, I kind of checked that before I went out. I thought, I said, no, they've got these kind of hoist systems and stuff, and that's all perfectly within the, the kind of regulations. But yeah, a different approach. I wouldn't... Uh, yeah, without working with scaffolding, it's kind of a different approach here. Really. They look personally lashed into something yeah, like, when they're up there. Yeah. So you're going to fall so far, and then hopefully you're not attached to so many yeah. less of weight than you because you pull them with you. What are those harnesses you got in, when you're in the uh, in the cherry pick and you clip it on, you think, well, what if this falls off? Yeah. I'm attached to this machine. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, I'm not going to be launched out of it. I'm going to be kept <laughs> yeah. into it as it goes. Right. So obviously, uh, Q cells. Obviously, I'd imagine over the time you've worked there there must be an opportunity maybe they've come to the whole department, they've said, we've got some solar panels, we've got a battery integrated system, and we need a volunteer maybe to be the poor soul that gets you know tens of thousands of pounds worth of free care attached to their properties. Is, is that happened to you at all, Ross? You see, it did, and um, somebody really had to step into those shoes and go, yeah, I, I want to be the person, and I very quickly got some scaffolding up at my own house and, yeah, really stepped into that role, so I was happy to do that. Took one for the team, we called it round Absolutely, here. Absolutely, uh, yeah, I was happy to be that guy. You know, yeah. always a company man, and uh, yeah, absolutely. So what did you put in, kilowatt-wise? So I've got just under six kilowatt peak of, of modules, and then we've got two batteries. Uh, so that's 13.68 kilowatt hours of, of battery storage. So it's a really, really nice size for a, for a family home. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you really, you really did take one now. I'd imagine, yeah, they were pushing you forward, were they? It was like, because you've got, did you say the beta version of this? So you're effectively having to go through all the pain of having free electricity that stores yeah, itself. Re yes. really painful to work with such great, great hardware. And uh, yeah, and I've, I've loved live with, living with it though, because it's given me that kind of first-hand experience. It's made a, made a big difference. But yeah, absolutely, I benefited from that and got a few thousand pounds worth of, of gear <laughs> on the house. So yeah, yeah absolutely. See you next week. <laughs> just, just to clarify, Q Cells originally a German company. Yes, founded yeah. founded in Germany in 1999. Um, we're one of the really big kind of developers of, of German manufacturing. The, the solar industry was dominated by solar manufacturers from Germany. Um, and then there was a lot of new entrants into the market from China. Um, when I first joined the company, there was still manufacturing done in Germany, but they'd recent, recently been bought out by Hanwha, who are a large uh, South Korean company. So there's still those two kind of cultures going on. There's still, still German influence, there's still South Korean influence. So, so when you think of German, you think of precision engineering, you think of brilliance, don't you, when you think of German? But they've, they've taken the, the process away from Germany? Did they no, not do I mean, it well enough? The, 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 man, the manufacturing, yeah, granted, is, is not done so much in, in Europe anymore. That, that's fair to say, most solar manufacturers. However, Germany still our R&D center, it's still our global R&D center. So we still say engineered in Germany on everything we do. We still have all the testing facilities there. So a lot of the, the engineering is still done there. Was that predominantly because of the way the process now works? That obviously, was there enough, say, footprint to make the panels they wanted to make? Because I've had a little sneak and hopefully we'll show it tonight of the video, haven't we? It's an incredibly large production site. And if you didn't have that footprint in Germany, it was obviously economical to move it somewhere else. Kind of like beneficial from two points of view. So we, we, we still retain the site we used to have, which was originally a factory in Germany. And then the beauty of that is we can still make lot, we can still make test modules there. So we have the facility to actually make modules, we just don't mass produce them there. Um, and then of course in, in, in Korea, we do have that mass production site and it's, it's huge. Have we got a chance to see that? Yeah, we've got a fantastic video, yeah, because that was one of the 
I was always interested. We liked a factory tour, and we couldn't quite go to Korea. <laughs> and it is Korea, as people said, oh, a Chinese manufacturer. No, no, no. So <laughs> QSL manufactured in Korea. Yep. And some of the global factories put Korean ownership. And, exactly. Uh, owned by Hanwha. Hanwha is a sort of, not a name people would know over here, is it? But It's not. It's one, it's one of the biggest companies in Korea. Think of other, other big Korean brands. You've got Kia, you've got LG, you've got Samsung. Never now, heard of them. <laughs> Never heard of them. <laughs> kind of in a similar, similar top, top 10 position, some of those guys. But yeah, we're not making cars, we're not making consumer electronics. Um, so Hanwha's business is in PV, it's in life insurance, it's in kind of a, a resort development, so the other things, but not necessarily household, household name. So. Yeah. But we will come on the fact that it's quite yeah. fascinating when you see that. It process. is, yeah, it's, it's amazing. You've, you've had it hot solar at home for how long? That you've so I've I've had it for uh, around about sixteen months, sixteen right. seventeen months now. Oh, so good. Nice little window you got that end, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> absolutely. Good calendar year of uh, generation. <laughs> and you're driving an EV as well. Driving an EV, yeah, absolutely. So um, obviously high energy usage um, and shifting that time of use and that kind of thing as as you need to. So. Uh, yeah, we're, we're big users, really. Yeah, just, just a little bit there for me. So you talked about shift in use and, and time and things like that. Just elaborate on the change of having solar panels with battery and an EV car to best optimise the freebies that you got. Yeah, so I, th I think that... <laughs> I think the, di the difference there mainly is you, you go and fit a PV system without battery and you're not in control of that kind of time of use shifting. You, your panels generate and it either gets used or it gets exported. But I think a key thing for certainly installers to understand is that it kind of goes hand in hand. So when you go and put a battery in, really you want that client to be then working with a particular en energy tariff, right. to maybe be considering time of use shifting and, and looking at what tariff they're on. So you know people like octopus and other people out there in the market they will have time of use tariffs and that will mean that you pay less for electricity during the night time um, and, and actually with a, with a battery system you can charge during those those hours so if you've got cheaper energy during the the four hours during the night you can you can charge your battery um, so am i seeing am i envisaging this because you mentioned you got a, an ev as well so you're absolutely if you're on that sort of tariff of those four hours the car is definitely on charge you could then also obviously charge the battery, say, in the winter months. I'd imagine you don't quite get the charging levels that you do in the summer. That's something you've probably experienced. So you're throwing that into, into the actual battery. Uh, but then you could take it almost straight out of the battery, put that one back into the car, because then you've got, say, eight, nine, ten hours of sunshine. Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty much. So if, you, if you're on that kind of tariff, which is highly preferential around a few hours a day, then you try and do everything you can during that, during that window. And we, we um, through not a lot of effort, just through simple app settings, setting your car to charge via the app at certain times, setting your battery to grid charge as well. Um, during the month of February, we, we managed to now that right down to two kilowatt hours for the whole month. The month? For the month, yeah. That you paid for? That we, that we, that we paid for outside of the time of use shift. So, so the expensive stuff? Yeah, so tw 20 hours per day, that was the, the peak time effectively, and we only used tw 2.1 kilowatt hours during wow. 20 hours of the day, yeah. times and, one month. And people are now going to be thinking life shift. So first of all, I've just envisaged there you only do dinner parties from one in the morning till four in the morning. Then there's a little bit of a, a soft window there to come round to my house to watch the telly and obviously cook yeah, food. Yeah, the children are only allowed to watch TV during that. Yeah, hours okay. And everything like that. Yeah, yeah. How how does that change occur then? So you've had 16 months of it. So I'm 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 a little bit you know Gordon knows what I'm like. I'm dreading that, but it sounds like the payoff's brilliant. So yeah. so how how easy is that transition across to being that way to think about your energy? I think it's I think it's high, highly beneficial for you for, for the first thing. I think people are thinking more in those terms that energy is starting to hit us in our pockets, so we start to think more about how we can reduce that. But it, it wasn't it wasn't a massive culture shift for us to do that. All it was a case of making sure our battery is loaded up, that we perform all the actions we need to. And the thing is, most appliances now, modern appliances, they're coming with some kind of time setting. So, it, it, to be honest with you, it wasn't a major major culture shift for us. Just Our future proofed already on that one, Gary, because the last dishwasher broke at Christmas. Oh, did it? Yeah, so did obviously it? you're looking, obviously, two days before Christmas, so you have to buy what you can get. And uh, I got one, but... Or, it's, or wait. Uh, or, or wait. No, no, yeah, no, you no, don't no. have to going, buy one, do you? I wasn't going through Christmas with no dishwasher. That just wouldn't have been... It'd be like normal people, yeah. yeah. Okay. But, um, so I bought a smart dishwasher. Okay. And this has the ability to hook up to things. Yeah. Okay. So at the minute, dishwasher, get this, when it's finished, yeah. I get a text message. Wow. The app flashes up to say the dishwasher is finished. Okay, and, and, and that's what we call a smart dishwasher. It just tells you it's stopped working. 
finished. In my house, yep. yeah, our smart dishwasher, you know when it stopped working because Dad's song's playlist finishes and he moves into another room. So okay. I, get the, I get the app message, I ring Caroline to tell her that the dishwasher has finished. And it <laughs> <is empty. laughs> you've, you've gone there, have you? Yeah. And then she obviously rings me back and want to wipe the blood off my face when I get in the house back home. I empty the dishwasher. I don't think that's a smart dishwasher. No, but it was supposed that's, and I was quite interested when I was digging into the, the battery system that we'll come on to, you're starting to talk about getting the system to talk directly with the appliances. You, you can, yeah, you can do that. And also, um, actually, if you put the right amount of battery capacity in, you, you can also live fairly freely knowing that if you've charged during the day and you make it through to that morning period with enough capacity in the battery, you can also kind of go about your life in, in the normal way. But I think that's an important point. If, if you're only going in and putting five kilowatt hours of battery, for instance, that isn't going to see you through the day in the winter months. You know, you won't, if you've got battery coupled with solar, and you've got four or five kilowatt hours of battery, it isn't, it isn't gonna see you through. I think most family homes are gonna need somewhere between kind of 10 and 15 kilowatt hours, I would say. And how many people are in your house? Just give us that context. Uh, there's my wife and there's, there's two, two sons, two, oh, right, two okay. young sons. I mean, fairly, fairly typical you know, yeah. so that, size, yeah, makes sense, family, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, okay, mm. on that one. So, so, so we've shifted. Your ears, Darren. Yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah definitely. More <laughs> batteries, that, look at that. Batteries, yeah, yeah. 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 So, so, shift has occurred, we're obviously locked in. Now, everyone will be watching it like me. Maybe when we were down at Park Heron, wasn't it? We had houses on a full estate, brand new, that were managed by somebody else. Is the evolution of this system actually going to be a fully managed system that w once it, it knows and can talk to all the appliances, off maybe one app that you're going to set this in motion so it uses effectively its own AI to understand what the weather's going to be like that day because it knows what part of the year we're in, it knows historical data, it knows your historical data because he knows at this time of the year X, Y and Z what you use. Can we see this being almost a system that will self-manage itself? Is that where we're going next? Uh, yeah, I, I mean I certainly think so and I, and I hope so. I think the ideal scenario is you've got a lot of AI there, you've got it learning your usage, it knows your energy tariff. It knows how much PV you've got. It knows what the weather's going to do the yeah. following day. And it can kind of put all those together and, and make a decision on what it wants to do. Um, but I think the other thing about the, the battery network with residential is you've got this absolute gigawatts and gigawatts kind of growing, which collectively is other, other power plants effectively online. And I think the benefit for homeowners in the future will be that, yeah, on, on a one-person system, you are only 10 or 15 kilowatt hours on that system. But collectively, your gigawatts... Of, of power together so there'll be many deals made collectively with people to uh you know aggregate their energy and these these kind of topics so i think there'll be many deals in the future with energy providers or aggregators to put you into a deal you know allow them to trade on your behalf and these kind of things that makes sense i was just waiting for that i was thinking well why would i join this club yeah they're gonna they're gonna give my energy away but they're gonna give me it and there's gonna be that trading thing gonna give it away gary well no no yeah. but, but but with a view to get it back etc is it's that it's that well, yeah no, it's, you, it's you both ways so you yeah. join that you know your next door neighbor who's buying expensive energy you're selling it to which you love because you hate your neighbor I'd, I hate him. Absolutely, <laughs> genuinely hate him. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Let's not turn into old Gary. Let's move on. <laughs> New Gary's here. Okay. But you'd be delighted, wouldn't you? you know, your yeah. battery's emptying out and sending it next door, yeah. and you're getting paid yeah, for it. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to empty him out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. But again, that's that's a, that's a, and it's such a short period of time. I would say what you've said there. I, I, we had some conversations off camera. Was absolutely brilliant. As we said, music to your ears, because all of a sudden now it's not just about the dash to put the panels on the roof. It's not just the dash to try and put the energy in the battery it's it's a lot bigger than that and that's in very small period of time so again for those people that haven't got there yet you know maybe that you know they're not the early adopters you might find you're actually incrementally as as six months goes past maybe a year the system is so much more intelligent maybe than the one that was sold two years ago yeah, yeah, and the, the deployment of batteries in these kind of technologies now is, is so much greater. You know, uh, probably two or three years ago, it might have been 15, 20% of systems. Now it's up to probably 80 or 90% of privately owned systems with, with a battery. Yeah. So that, that shifted entirely. And what, what we see really is that you know, 10 years ago with the feed-in tariffs and these kind of things, that was driving the market. People used to present on, on a payback, on, on kind of financials. Actually, now the, the, demar the demand is very organic. It's... The, the amount of uh, PV deployed in the UK in the first quarter, I think is as much as it's ever been. You know, feed in tariff or no feed in yeah. tariff. I've almost had an, an epiphany there. So what I'm thinking there is, so I've, let's, let's make it nice and easy for Gary's maths. I've gone and got my system, my roof's massive, I want a couple of batteries and all the rest of it, and it's 20,000 pounds. Okay, 
But haven't I really bought my energy up front? I've gone £20,000 in. I know exactly what I'm going to get in energy based on my panels and historical data about the weather. I've locked in that price for the whole time I live in the property with those panels and that battery by paying up front. Completely. And wouldn't we have all liked to have gone back three years and locked our energy tariff in for eternity almost because we'd have said, oh, we're only paying 11p a kilowatt hour. But you can do that, can't you, with a battery? Because that's a fixed cost, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. We, Did you we like would... that one? I'll come out with that one. That was yeah, it was, yeah, it was incredible. Good. It was yeah. really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. brilliant. Oh. I just, I mean, I'm rather pleased myself with that one. Did you like that one as well? Yeah, yeah, it's good. You're going to use that one. You're going to use, yeah, you're going to use that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, absolutely. That that fixed cost. Great way to think about it over a period of time. You know really quite well how much per annum that's going to generate to a reasonable degree of accuracy, and times that by fifteen or twenty years. You can even allow for replacement of certain items. And yeah, well, the the, the uh, kilowatt hour figure you're going to get to is very competitive. Um, and I think that with the with the energy market and everything, that's another thing that's played into the hands of the the demand, because everyone's thinking well. Prices now are hitting people in their pocket. They understand electricity a lot more than they did a couple of years ago. We lived for decades with quite stable energy prices. Yeah. But now people are starting to become more educated on energy prices and thinking what they can they do. I think even if prices stabilise after this, the damage has been done effectively. People now realise that the energy market is not that secure and they need to take control of it. Yeah, and again, keeping it residential before we move anywhere else. Again, that's that classic. If you've... Well, it didn't cost you anything, so you're all right. But you put that investment into your property. But also, <coughs> let's think now we're going to start moving property. Your property is way more desirable, possibly, than the one next door because the investment's gone into that one. Whether you get the money back or a little bit more, maybe a premium, back in the day when people put those conservatories on the, uh, the, the, the back or the side of a property, you know, it's too hot in the summer, too cold in the winter, whereas at least yours is, is going to be a property that would be very desirable, wouldn't it? So it's actually a massive asset on two levels. Uh, yeah, I think so, and it's all about that kind of education of the person moving in. So I don't know whether we're necessarily always quite there, because obviously the person who, who's coming in and looking at that property needs to understand what the benefits are. But I think once explained, and obviously all the time, there's more and more solar being deployed on rooftops and people are seeing them around or they know somebody else has got some, them. So the education piece is really where that needs to lie. But I think gradually the culture is changing hugely. We look at like new build properties and these kind of things. I think the time is coming where people are going to say, I want that on my property. It's kind of non-negotiable that I have to have certain features on the property. And I think renewables are going to come into that with the new build market as well. Yeah, again, there's one for you, and it? That's selling on, and it? So you've got two there. You've got the gift of buying your energy up front and increasing the value of your property. I'm doing your job for you, isn't it? It's the easiest job in the world, and it's selling solar at the minute, according to your intro. <laughs> But then if we expand it out and we look at <coughs> manufacturing processes or commercial processes that, that have got a, a set time frame. So maybe a Doncaster cable might be open from 7 in the morning till 7 at night, 12 hour a day. Some of the, you know, most of the time it's going to be light in some aspects of it. Is there any benefit, Gordon, do you think, in actually having a battery system in there when they could actually aggregate what they believe the sun's going to give them in energy compared to what they're using? Hopefully they've done a granular level detail on what they use. Is there an advantage in putting anything in batteries, or is that something you think that type of business would miss out? Depends on the depends on what's happening in the building, isn't it? So I did speak to Aaron at Doncaster Cable about that. And making cable is incredibly energy intensive. Yes, so they're going to put solar on the roof, and all of what they generate will be used inside the factory in a working day. In a work, well, they run twenty four seven. Oh, do they? Yeah. Okay, what's the energy lock at night? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> no, I mean, that's in storage. Solar's yeah, not very good. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Torch on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, so, but, so that's there, but obviously, some build like a warehouse. You've got a massive roof, not a lot of energy happening inside. Yeah. So you can get these. You can get industrial scale storage, ship and container size batteries, um, but industrial energy is complicated because you've got all sorts of tariffs for being, uh, yeah, disconnecting from the load and things like that. But the more battery storage out there, the, the more chances you've got to win in the market. So, so you'd say in that situation, being 24 hours a day, which is, takes it away from my 12 hour day, that batteries would be a good option if you were able to buy it in cheaper in the evening, you'd be winning twice. Your evening shift costs you less <coughs> money if you've got a better tariff in the evening, but you could also offset the day tariff with the batteries as well. You yeah. think there's well, a- No, industrial use are massively penalized for taking power in peak hours. Right. Massive. It's really complicated. If you're in the industrial space, you know, people, you have alarms going off and all sorts of, oh, I don't know. 
about a super chat. We'll come back to that. Okay, you have a good shout yeah. yeah. I do, I do have one small anecdote about that, actually. In, the, um, in, in Scandinavia, they were actually having to shift their, uh, they were only working for 12 hours a day in certain premises, and they shifted that entirely to night. No, no, it's fine. No, you're thinking exactly, that's yeah, great. Yeah, because yeah. you would, wouldn't you? And they were actually uh, reporting on that, saying this is really affecting the workers' health. They're now not getting, you know, daylight that they used to get. They would, they would typically go for a day shift and then the factory was only open at night. Yeah. And, that, and the actual impact on people's well-being and all that kind of stuff that played into that. And it was just quite an interesting thing that they'd effectively made themselves uh, shift their time of use. Yeah, and, and you could see why somebody would do that. Yeah. You know, I'm employing you for 12 hours, but well, it happens to be 12 hours in the evening when my energy's... You know, it's a clever move. Obviously, all the, the benefits to the staff aren't as good, but people do work a night shift, don't they? You know, people are willing to take a slightly extra salary for that. But obviously, Doncaster, 24 hours, they haven't got that. Are you finding that Oldfield are, are mostly servicing the, the more domestic market, or are you across a, a wide range of things? We're probably across a, a wide range of things. I'd probably still say maybe heavily domestic but we we are picking up some commercial work through do you equal that on the batteries I mean, most people going for the panels with no batteries. i'd say the batteries are quite majority domestic at the moment yeah I'm just not sure whether the technology for the the industrial stuff is is there at the moment and i think that's you know that's what's brought the the solar to the forefront is the the storage side of things now which yeah. But if you're selling a domestic system, are most people taking the battery option with it? Yeah, I'd say 80% would be would be battery storage as well now. It's just, you know, it's like you said, like a lot of people don't work from home, do they now? So, you know, if you, you're generating it and you're at home using it, it's great. But if, if you're generating and not using it, you're just... Mm. Um, you're just losing it and pumping it back to the grid. So, um, yeah. But yeah, you do find that sort of 80% now would be, would be battery storage. And do you see many people opting for battery only? Because I mean, I'd get solar. Doing the roof's quite a bit of hassle, mm. and, and for a lot of people, obviously you live in a block of flats, you can't. It's, have real, a, it's a real hassle. It's yeah, a you don't see the benefit. You don't see the you benefit. Like. It's not your roof. Are, are many people sort of going for a battery on the option? I mean, what what I achieved during during February could definitely just be achieved with with the battery. I could have done that with, without the solar in all effect. Obviously, the, the the solar would have topped that up and reduced the amount I was buying in during the night time. But yeah, I would say it's definitely a viable route. Yeah, which, which is nice to hear, isn't it? Because there's always there's always a loser in everything, in it. You know, people who've got a terraced house, they don't think they can have a battery powered car because they can't have a lead. They're trying to overcome that. Like you said, yeah, the, the, you know, I've got a I've got a, a flat third floor flat. I'm not going to benefit. I've got the energy cost, but I ain't got any benefits. We've yeah. seen systems where they share a roof, haven't we? But that's more, uh, share, yeah, 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 a whole system sort of thing. So I come down to Oldfields, and now this is probably not typical. Again, comes back to your comments. What's your electrical wholesaler like? Do they stock solar? So could you walk in off the streets? I'm going to ask you the question in a minute. Could you walk in off the streets into your electrical wholesaler, pick up, I don't know, four white plastic socket outlets, some sort of consumer unit? Maybe you go for the lovely Luden Palazzoli one we've got on our race wall that we saw slowly uh, being connected up today. Um, and you've, you've gone through there, you've picked those up. And then, of course, I also want eight panels, rails, and clips. Is that something that I can pick up at Oldfields? It's, yeah, definitely something you can pick up at Oldfields. But there and then, no, I'm, I'm talking about walking in, coffee, sockets, consumer unit, panels, and out. Yep. I can do that at your place. You could do, yeah. So surely in order to do that, you, you haven't got that, tr yeah, it's tiny and it. Most electrical wholesalers I've gone in over the years, they tend to stack it higher, don't they? Mm. They're, they're yeah. doing more, it'll turn up almost on time sort of deliveries for themselves. We are we are quite fortunate where we are that we do, we do have a, a warehouse um, that we have been able to fill full of panels and rails and... I think I've got some, some pictures here that when I went down um, this week uh, to see Matty Boy, who we'll speak to later. So, so that's dead opposite your wholesale. Yeah, so, so our, our trade counter. Yeah. And no the, coffee machine building. in there straight no, away. Unfortunately not. Okay, no. so, so that's there. So when we get in there, this is, this is quite a large uh, large building. How many, how many square feet are we looking at? 4,000 square feet. Well, the, the, just the solar side. The, the other side is 4,000 square feet, but that's more. So we've got about 8,000 in total. How many panels would be in one of those pallets? So you've got, there is 36, 36. in each of those. Wow. So 10 on a roof, are we sort of? Is it? 8, 10. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's an average, yeah, yeah. probably. So, so, that, so that makes it, you know, so logistically now I'm thinking, so that's your pack, which isn't going out on the truck because the, they want 6, 8, 10. Mm. Is there a skill in breaking down a pack and, and not breaking a panel? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is a bit of a skill, really. So, um, I mean, we do we do transport on a daily basis, whether it be a full full pallet or, you know, we do we do break down and, um, and deliver, you know, basically what the customer wants. So, 
you know, for example, if you were to walk in tomorrow and say, I need 12 panels and a full kit to go, then we have a driver that would be quite happily to be there to uh, drop it off. Maybe not the same day, but you know, we, we do aim to please and... You're gonna need a bigger van. Yeah, well, I just, yeah. I just, I just, I'm just, it's, 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 a, it's a breathtaking moment for me there because it's almost what you gotta do. Mm. You know, if, if you want to be, you know, if you're the electrical wholesaler that can only service part of electricity, you've got a whole lighting studios there. I know yeah. you, you're into your, your smart and your AV and all the rest of it in there. But you, there's another opportunity and Oldfields have gone in there. I'm thinking there's a lot of electrical wholesalers up and down this country that won't have the floor space to do that. I think that's, you've hit the nail on the head there. It's the floor space that's required in order to... But there's always electrical wholesalers within a distance of each other because we tend to shuffle around over time if we don't get on a golf day out or something like that you know if you know matty boy decides to take a limited few people on his golf trip um, he went over to spain the other week and had some cold beverages and i think that week was the week i bought my 332 mil grommets oh. and i never got an invite to spain we'll bring that up a bit later on so but, we're now, but i can see people voting with their feet so if I need something like that and I'm, I've got a silly wait time or whatever or we're not getting it done, you're probably going to change wholesale. Do you agree with that, Gordon? You're going to move where the kit is? Yeah, it's like what do people know. It's, yeah, they say, try to order a, a pallet's worth of solar panels and imagine the turn up when you're out. <laughs> Which for a lot of contractors during the day would be that, that time, That's the it? ethos. I mean, yeah. we, we bring it in-house so we're completely in control of it. So if somebody comes in and say, right, I'm doing a job tomorrow morning at eight o'clock. Yeah. We'll be there at five to eight. So, you know, whereas if you're ordering from these, these bigger places or if it's people that, you know, you're doing back to back orders, you, you're relying on couriers and you can be sat there at eight o'clock, but it could be six o'clock. Imagine the call. I've tried to come home and someone's blocked the drive with a pallet full of solar panels. Mm. Yeah. And, and again, we're notorious. I'm sure you, you experience all the time. We're notorious for getting on a job doing a load of work and then finding we're short or something and then jumping back in the van and making that, you know, round trip just to pick up, you know, something very insignificant maybe. Because that's the natural, you know, that's what electricians do. <coughs> I don't remember everything. But to be able to have access to panels, rail and all the infrastructure yeah. at your local wholesale is probably quite refreshing, I would suggest, to people working with you. But it looks like you're carrying a bit of, bit of stock there. There's a few quids worth yeah, in there. There's, yeah, there's a couple of quid in there. Yeah, there is a couple of quid. And we'll leave it as a couple of quid and we won't leave your postcode. <laughs> Old Field Skipton. <laughs> Locked up every night. A few comments coming in. Hanwa also made someone's artificial hip. There wow, go. there you go. Someone I did not know that. There you go. There's a thing that Hanwell makes. One of their uh, hips replaced on the NHS and are made by Hanwell. So there you go. Oh, not solar yeah. powered as well. But uh, Eddie's watching in the shower. So, <laughs> comes. A little bit too much information there, Eddie. Thanks for that one. Uh, but speaking of Hanwell, I think we've got a little sneak peek of what goes on in the factory when we look at a manufacturer panel. Yeah. We've got that video, Rick. Let's have a look. See what's missing, I would suggest. Yeah, as well. see what's missing. It's quite interesting. What's uh, missing? If you think about space. Solar Solutions, designed and manufactured at one of the most advanced solar production facilities, the Jinchun Factory of Q-Cells. Q-Cells is the world's premier producer of photovoltaics. Q-Cells Jinchun Factory is bigger than 17 football fields. It is capable of producing 2.2 million high-quality solar cells every day, a total of 4.5 gigawatts of cells. The Jinchun factory has enhanced its manufacturing excellence by employing advanced approaches and processes in every step of its production. The production line is meticulously designed to be easily monitored inspected, and even analyzed using artificial intelligence. It is equipped with fully automated robots to manage end-to-end -end processes, from material warehousing, production, packaging, and to shipment. Most automated robots used in the Jinchun factory have been constructed by one of Hanwha Group's affiliates, Hanwha Machinery. We expect to achieve massive scale, 
while maintaining the highest levels of product quality and durability. Our optimized production system is one of the drivers behind the cost competitiveness. Qcell's R&D has a strong track record of innovations in PERC technology. Our state-of-the-art Quantum Duo Z technology, engineered in Germany, represents many technological breakthroughs improving the PERC technology. Qcell's developed Quantum Duo technology by adding multi-bus bar, half-cell and wiring technologies for increased efficiency and output. The more advanced Quantum Duo Z technology was developed by applying zero-gap technology that reduces gaps between cells to remarkably improve module efficiency and output. Using artificial intelligence and laser-imprinted TRAQ codes, we're able to trace every step of every solar cell during production. The big data collected by TRAQ and the deep learning capability of our artificial neural network help us to ensure the overall quality of each solar cell produced at our Jinchun facility. Furthermore, we apply a number of technological features to secure highest yields for our customers. Hotspot Protect, Anti-PID and Anti-LID form the Qcell's yield security. This is how we can provide the best-in-class warranty that guarantees 98% of nominal power after the first year and 86% even after 25 years of operation. Qcell's uncompromising quality is proven and maintained by rigorous tests. The Jinchun factory implements quality test called QCPV with TUV Rhineland. QCPV is up to three times stricter than global IEC certification. It's the only certification in the entire industry to involve independent and random on-site testing from running production as well as regular material testing. Massive scale. Manufacturing excellence. Top performance. Uncompromising quality. The ultimate solutions for solar energy are created here at the Jinchun factory. The smart choice. Q-cells. What a standout comment there. What's the comment? Well, apart from my American accent, Gary, I think I passed off pretty well on that video. <laughs> uh, yeah, someone spotted no solar panels on the roof of the factory. I 100% agree. Uh, yeah. That was filmed a couple of years ago. I don't know if it has got them now, but yeah, absolutely valid point. All yeah. right. There we go. A couple of kids and people did spot there wasn't many people in that factory, was there? It's a highly automated process. Very, very automated. Yeah. So, so we could have had 17 football pitches, but not actually get a team of 11 up to play a game. Could be certainly not 22 to have a game where we could have played someone. So yeah, it, and it was the thing that struck us the most, apart from a wonderful process. And again, it goes back to it, doesn't it? If, if you're in control of maybe building, manufacturing of the machines that are in there, for that process, it just looks super slick. Yeah, we, we, we own, uh, you know, we talk about kind of vertical integration, all that kind of yeah. stuff, but yeah, <laughs> we're quite big in terms of that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it showed. And that's why I think the scale, that when they were very quick in there to say they could ramp that scale up. Yeah, so that everyone's seeing it's coming. And we've seen it coming. Obviously, you've got to get the panels to people who want to fit them in it. Yes, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, the, the fact is that we've got multiple locations kind of globally to give us uh, different different avenues into different markets. But yeah, I mean, that's just one example that that's multiplied in the US and Malaysia and uh, China as well and different locations. So but I think that's a lot of energy worth of panels produced a year. I mean, that is a, that is a massive number. Yeah. yeah. Was it 4.5 gigawatts or something? Yeah, I mean, to, to, you know, to be honest with you, the, the, the scale that other manufacturers as well are ramping up is, is absolutely phenomenal. So uh, in, the, in the last few years, everyone's kind of doubling, quadrupling even their, their capacity, and it's grown at a huge rate. You know, the, amount, the amount that's being deployed in China alone really just dwarfs yeah. other global markets. So, yeah, it's absolutely huge. So anyone thinks it's a fad, 
<laughs> I think it's, it's passion. I know we had that feed in tariff stuff a few years ago, and it sort of went, and, and I think this time it's obviously come back. I mean, yeah, no, I mean, no, nobody, nobody really wants subsidies anymore, if you're, if you're honest. We're, we're on a kind of level playing field with other energy platforms now, and um, we've got sustainable business. So that, that's the thing, is that people are demanding the products now for other reasons that are not related to subsidies or... Obviously, they do have a financial element to them, but it's more financial element against buying an electricity from from the grid. You know, for instance. And with the full circle, and with the EV car and all the rest of it, this is a, a okay. We can argue about everything to do with green, but let's ignore manufacturing aspect of it. Once that's in 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 the building, your building, you know, obviously when you move on eventually and all the rest, of it, it's still there. We're still producing that energy. We've still got the right to send it to our washing machine, our hot water to our car in order that we can power our life moving forward. Yeah, the, the network's been uh, like increasingly uh, the uh, kind of electrification of the network all the time. Like more, more and more of what we're doing is, is gonna be driven by electric, particularly heating and the, these kind of topics. So yeah, it's so, it's so kind of prescient at the minute. I'm glad you said that, because I wanted to ask that when you were going through with your thing, how do you heat your house at the moment? I, I'm on gas. I'm on, the, I'm on the gas grid, yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, if and when we do come to replace <laughs> that, uh, I think we we strongly look at a heat pump just to give us that that kind of element of control, especially coupled with the battery and the PV. I think a heat pump would would be uh, certainly worth looking at. I think it would probably make sense. Okay, so when 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 the company says to you we're doing heat pumps, Ross, you're going to be straight in there again. Look, I did the battery solar thing. It's only right. I've got the full integration of the system. Please, I'll be the person to do the beta again. You know, we're we're, we're using Samsung cells, and Samsung are manufacturing heat pumps. So I'm, I'm already one step ahead of you there. <laughs> Sorry. You're yeah. taking one for the team over now. I just love you. I can imagine a lot of people have some things. To yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the and the Korean, of course. So. <laughs> but but yeah. So that's and again. So if we're looking at this, if if this is an opportunity for, for electricians, which we know it is, and it definitely is. You've just told me what the next one is, because we, we, we're trying to get off gas. We know it's we know where it's going, but you I mean it, it doesn't take much now to work it out, does it? So you've got a clear blueprint in front of you that if you're producing your own energy, you're storing it, and maybe you're importing a little bit at a cheaper price. That's all you want to use. You don't then want to then drift off and get some gas in there, do you? If you don't have to. No, no, and it, yeah, it kind of changes your energy mix in the property. You're now a micro generator, so you kind of look at things differently. And there's, there's a, there is a really whole new world of, of opportunities opening up there, more demand. If you look at the way the PV market's been serviced for the last few years, it's been normally by companies who set themselves up as a, a PV installer. They, they have a name with green or solar in their, in their yeah. title, and they service the market very well. They've been great at it, but the demand has come from people you know, who, who go looking for that. I think now it's more, it is becoming more of an electrician conversation. Most of the installers, the good installers in that world from last year, have put notices on their website saying, can't accept any leads for the next six months. Um, we're just too stacked out with demand. Look, we'd love to you know, keep you happy and service your requirements, but we can't. And that just suggests that there's so much opportunity there for um, a person's local electrician. You know, it doesn't mean you have to go in and grow the biggest business in the world, but there, there are a lot of opportunities, even if you work in your local area, to service you know, maybe just, just even your existing customer base even. Did you hear directorship there throughout mm, that whole yeah, conversation? Yeah, you just heard, I'm on, the, I'm on that escalator <laughs> and I, yeah. Already yeah, on it's, that. Absolutely, absolutely, uh, and it's right, yeah, it's, it's totally right, yeah. It's, it's staring us all in the face. Yeah, we can't say we missed this one. And I would argue some people, when we, we did back in 2019, was talking about the smart revolution. Maybe this is it. Maybe having a smart integrated electrical system is smart. And maybe, I'm going to be, I don't want to be rude to anyone, so that means, usually means you're going to be rude. And then maybe people who are having cinema rooms, fancy lighting control, window dressing, window treatments, which one is it? Treatments? Window, uh, window tre treatments. Window treatments that go, yeah, go, your blinds. Yeah, electric blinds go up and down, all the rest of it. Maybe that isn't what really smart is. Smart is actually your electricity bill every month. I would suggest that's really smart. And maybe having clever lighting, everything powered and a TV that actually is consuming energy, that maybe is not quite as smart as we thought it was. Mm. I've put that out there. That's my personal opinion, by the way. No one else's. So, yeah. Maureen, <coughs> some interesting. Just a question someone's put in because it came as a super chat about EICRs, Gary. Okay, thanks. Uh, is this my one now? Just do a, a certificate of comp compliance, then you don't need to make up codes for faults. Is this somebody from our country? Yeah, I don't think so. No, we well, have to do them, I think, is the... Uh... Yeah, so, and I, I've got every reason to believe that, that that system might evolve over time. I think 
Yeah, there's some amb 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 ambiguity. Ambiguity. That's the word. We'll use that. We'll, we'll get that one in. So, the, yeah, the, and again, I think the IET could do with sharpening this up a little bit as well. So, um, yeah, there is some codes out there that are, yeah, a little bit open. They've already sharpened up this week, Gary. They've tidied up this week. Yeah, they have. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can, I can now fry me uh, smoke detector. It's not a problem. Yeah. Well, so, there's lots of comments in it. It's life of solar panels. So, I mean, we, we certainly warranty them for 20, 25 years. I think, realistically, a good, well-manufactured solar panel could be lasting 40, 50 years plus, realistically. Right. If you think of the ones that are out there in space and different environments where they, you know, they've been out there for decades now, um, obviously, granted, different different kind of environments. I don't know how a bit harsher solar panels do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, if it was yeah. a little bit colder yeah. at night and a bit hotter exactly. during the day. Yeah. Um, and things can fly in them. And that vacuum is just not good. Yeah. But yeah, the, the, it's certainly good. Well, it's going to degrade over time. It's going to degrade by a small amount each year. You're going to get less and less power over time. But if it's been well, ma well manufactured, good brand, yeah, 40, 50 years easily, I believe. Truth is, we don't don't really know where the end point of that is because the mass manufacturing of solar panels has only really been happening in, in the last kind of two decades. And, and that cracks me up because 25 years was the, the life expectancy of PVC cables. So when we, we were into that modern PVC twin and CPC cables, they put a 25 year lifespan on it. And you're like, wow, it's, gonna, it's only, in your own mind, it's only gonna last 25 years. That seems to be the, that benchmark is we don't know. So we'll say 25 years, you, you said 40 to 50. That's, that's, that's a fantastic. And it, you know, the, you know the, that panel is going to be on there and producing possibly for most people's entire life. I'd, I'd be frustrated if that stopped working at 30 or 35 years. To be honest, I would see that as being be below what my expectations. Well, I'd be gutted from. if I was you, Ross, because you didn't pay for them, and I would be fuming. Absolutely. If I only got 35 years out of my free panels, <coughs> I'd tell you, I'd be properly leaning into them. I would, yeah. 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 Warranty claim. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I mean, it, it, people said that when LED lighting came in. People said, oh, they're going to last for 50,000 hours. They said, you've only been making them a year. How do you know that? <laughs> but obviously, they do. It depends on the brandy, but it's all that. Uh, I'm back pedaling. Quality, <laughs> well made product will last the distance. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, yeah, the, there's not much, I'm saying there's not much technology in a solar panel. There's not many actual components. It's just lots of step and repeat of a, essentially what is a diode. Yeah, exa exactly. It's just quite solid state. It's more, it's more of your kind of battery technology or your inver inverters and those, those kind of things that are going to. Yeah. be more replaceable over the over the lifetime of that system really yeah no moving parts should be no problem should it yeah it's not working with you you'll last forever <laughs> well there you go gary <laughs> boom boom <laughs> ah one of all right well, well we, there's a lot of questions i'll have to digest these because there's loads of comments coming in well we'll do that we'll just have a look across the rick's tool time gary. cool i hope he's got something super technical yeah. for us what have you got for us rick <laughs> rick's tool time <laughs> Hello and welcome to Rick's Tool Time. This week I thought I would delve into the world of networking, so I have braced myself, ready for the barrage of comments telling me how sparks shouldn't be messing with data. Anyways, I've been back out there on the streets looking for a stripper, to which I found the Wago data stripper. So let's take a look and see what's in the box. The stripper removes the outer insulation and the foil sheathing with one tool, such as PVC insulated data cables, for example, Cat5, Cat6, Cat7 and twisted pair cables. The titanium nitride coated blades will strip cable diameters from 4.5mm to 10mm in size. There is a locking mechanism which seems to be popular with these kinds of stripping tools. The tool itself is shy of 100mm in length and 20mm in diameter. I'm going to demonstrate how to remove the insulation, sheathing, outer jacket or whatever you want to call it on these data cables here. Firstly. I place the outer PVC in the end marked number one and as you can see a couple of twists and the outer insulation is off. Now this tool has a second cutting edge identified with the number two so if you are stripping cables with shielding then this is where you want to be using side two again a couple of twists and the shielding is removed. So who knew it? Wago also make tools. Well to summarise I think this tool will sit nicely in my contraband data terminating box but I'm going to throw it back out there to you data networking experts. So let me know what you think. Is it great or is it a gimmick? Get your vote in. But till then, I'll see you on the flip side. ta -da. Thanks to all time. Who knew? Wago did tools. Well, we didn't until the Wago tools turned up. Well, seems to be an array of Wago tools coming in. But what do people think? Yeah, let's, let's have the good a gimmick. We've got the, what do people think of that? Has anyone used a stripper like that? 
Dirty cable stripper. Yeah, gonna get us in a world of trouble. I just want to say for the record, folks, it's not me on this one. So, so Aaron, did you dabble in data when you were on the tools? No, not really, no. Yeah. I say something else then, but no, I didn't know. <laughs> not dare to know. So great or gimmick, it means it's going to go somewhere behind us. That means in a few moments time, we're going to need a, a willing volunteer who's of equal height to me in order to get it down. Um, so we're going to bring the tool from above down, but get it in. So have you used this type of tool? Have you used the one from Way? Did you know Wago had tools? Because we certainly didn't. And obviously we had the, the wire strippers for some time on the book. Got a second set of wire strippers. They're equally as good, aren't they? We've got some good tools back there. Mm. So Wago in that world of tools as well now so you've got yourself 15 seconds is it great or is it a gimmick and then we'll uh, we'll have a little closer look and then we'll place it onto the wall so that's what we'll be doing next it's still on dial up the saying here oh i think it's, it's, it's on the great the audience thinks it's great oh, no someone's uh Oh, we've got a, got a traditionalist in their gimmick, just like pass-through RJ45s. Oh, oh I, I like the pass-through. I, I know there's a <coughs> there's a very vocal member of the um, Instagram community, I would suggest, that doesn't, doesn't like that type of thing. I love it. So when I taught, it, it was it, when we did that RJ45, it was a nightmare for learners. They were so small, trying to get them in the right. Put them in, it wouldn't do it. Pass-through ones, easy, easy, easy. Yeah, move on to the next assessment. We've stalled for long enough, Ross. We're going to have to Honestly. go down onto our knees yes. and we're going to have to lose what's left of our dignity. Yeah. So if I give, uh, give Rick this camera in case he needs another camera. So we're going to come down here and we're going to do the following, aren't we? So, so just, 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 yeah, just, <coughs> camera, just, just so we know, look, I'm 6'4 and you reckon you're? I'm 7'2". Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for telling me the truth there, because I've been six for my entire adult life, so about three years. Right, come on, on our knees, so we're here. Ross, we're going to look up here, and we're going to summon the tool from above. Okay, okay so we're going to need to That's use fine. the phrase, you, and gonna, I'll practice one okay. for you. Is that your Is that, best? That tumbleweed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. so we'll try again. We'll so try together, again. together, together. Okay. Ready, and... Come on. <laughs> <laughs> right, you stay there. Okay. Now, now back at the camera. So, so. <laughs> really? <laughs> Let's have a look then. So we've got the, the, the following. Do you want to take a little look at this stripper? Oh. Okay, so as he goes back up, so talk from above, thank you very much. And thank you very much for playing along because I, I know that was, uh, as, uh, yeah, just difficult for me to get over the seven foot two that you are. So we're almost the same height now, aren't we, when you're sitting down. <laughs> so, way go stripper, um, what was the audience saying? Where am I putting it on the board? And then we'll have a word with Ross for the final decision. So what we're going is from just behind um, Darren is, uh, where's a coffee machine? Co I will move the coffee machine that's been ill-placed there at the top. So you really need to it, know the uh, opinion of the audience. Yeah, so top 11. I mean, they're a great. I know no, you're not a man of the tools, Ross. Yeah, I've got it. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're thinking room. on the whole great, I think. So they, they, great. You think it's a great tool, yeah? Okay, I'm going to put it on the board because obviously I've got to reach that one at the top and I don't want you to stretch too much for it. Okay, so so we're going great. So that means, it, I don't think it's 11. I don't think we've, inve I don't think we've reinvented tools. So I'm not going to put it, yeah. I'm not going to put it somewhere just, up there. So sort, of, sort of middle, just below I'm the just coffee gonna, machine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that goes down there because coffee machine should. So we're going to take this one. We're going to take the Wago stripper. And we quite like those. Was it was it better than that one, or are we going to say it's on the par? Solar stripper. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So solar stripper. So let's put it in the same region as our solar stripper. So that's I'd say it's an eight. We're giving that an eight out of eleven. So thank you very much, Ross, for that. So and thank you, Rick, for another wonderful Rick's tool time. <laughs> and he'll be back in a fortnight with another tool. Don't even know what he's got next time, do you? Uh... And pencils, I suppose you'll do a pen next week, will he? Yeah, yeah when he's back yeah. on. Okay. Lots in, but there's quite a few Wago things. They've got, they do tools. Did you know Wago do tools? <coughs> do you better. sell Wago tools? Yes, we do, yeah. You do? Yeah. Wago tools? Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Sells Wago tools. Well, for the count for the solid stores, that the solar stripper is quite good as well. We we can that's a that's a good little tool. I've seen that one before. Competitively priced as well. Was oh, it? I'll save lots of margin down at the counter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, not yeah, eventually you get it from yeah, yeah. <laughs> talking of talking about the margins and good things, yeah. I think I'll need a stretch. <laughs> I think I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna get up. I'm gonna go and see our good friends over here. Oh, these are the two directors that should have been on camera, certainly one of them as we like to call him Matty Boy. Now, Matty Boy, I came down and I did about, uh, I don't know, a 40 minute pitch. You were gonna come down and see me and you spent the entire 40 minutes windling out of it, didn't you? You were, mm. you were not gonna come down and be live on the telly. So we're not, gonna, we're not gonna bring you in live on the telly no. in Mastabs and we're not gonna bring you live on the telly also on Facebook. 
well promised you me, didn't you? I did. Mm -hmm. So what's your role down at Old Fields then, apart from wingling out any hard work and giving it to Darren? <laughs> One of the directors. Okay, and what does that really mean? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Looking you, at do your, it, you do a bit of everything. Look at so. your transport, it's very nice. You obviously went on the Spanish trip, didn't you? The one that I didn't get to go on. <laughs> Remember the golf trip you did as well? That I no, that wasn't a golf trip, it was a work trip. Okay, so, so did you play golf? No. With some of your clients? No. You were... In none of our clients. It, it was with our suppliers. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah a bit of schmoozing. Bit a bit of schmoozing, schmoozing yeah. 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 And, and how long have you been with Oldfields? Uh, 27 years now. Okay, so pre-hair still? <laughs> I'd never had hair. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> came, day came, one. Came out like that and he <laughs> yeah, stayed like that. Yeah. So, so it's been great fun today and uh, we thank you ever so much, Matthew. So it's not Matty Boy, is it? I forgot that wrong. You know, it was Matthew you wanted to be called and not Matty Boy, was it? Is it? Anything. <laughs> anything now. You've lost anything you've lost. now. Well, we've got Andy as well, so it's a sensible one of the team. So, what's your role down at Oldfields? Another director. You're, and your younger director, are of you? Course, yeah, yeah. So the younger he's, director. He's full of them. He, he's full of what? Directors. It's full of directors. It is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's uh, more high paid than low paid. Is that what we're saying down at Oldfields? Sign of you doing well, isn't it? All that solar you're kicking out, isn't it? You're, you're millions Solar's of the future, yeah. It is, yeah. It is this week, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What was it before? <laughs> Smart. But before that's lighting. Smart before, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, next week it'll be heat bumps, won't it? Yeah, so, yeah okay. So, um, which branch do you work out? Because you've got five, haven't you? Yes, we've got five. Skipton mainly. Okay, so is that where the top team are? They're based at Skipton, are they? They're all top teams. All oh, right, okay. That's where watching. All oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we started. I like that one. Yeah, okay. So, wholesale business, how long have you been in it? 30 plus years. Too long to remember there too from that pause, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, nearly too long. <laughs> So we should be near the end of it. And we thank you very much. All Foods have been brilliant today. They came out for their free Indian. They've spent the night drinking our free drinks. It's a, it's a bit like uh, I'll next, I'm, I'm on the next Spanish trip, don't I? Definitely. Thank you very much. I'm on the next Spanish trip. Right. Thank you for them. Right. We're back in. So, Gordon, have you had a chance to go through the comments while we were doing that? Well, some, you a nice uh, break? some interesting ones. People saying, obviously, more solely got out there. Voltage on the local electricity grid creeping up. Yeah. If you've heard that. We know, know Ross isn't technical on there. That could be one for us to pick up later on. Possibly. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't that all link into the voltage measurement for pen fault protection drifting up? I think that's going to be a problem coming up. <coughs> yeah, but it's not pen fault. It's just the no, but the, but it monitors the voltage, doesn't it? it starts monitoring the voltage, yeah. and we start sending that voltage up, don't we? Are we not going to fool ourselves into? Oh, you mean them, them tripping out? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that's a problem. Yeah. So yeah. The inverters trip out at a high voltage. But the yeah. problem is. Traditionally, your network operator manages the voltage. He does, yeah. When there's everyone flooding it with solar, yeah. it, they have not got many tools to control the voltage. Like I did a little, I've got a little plug-in voltage indicator, nothing technical. I plugged it in and I was at, I think, 251, but my next door neighbour's got solar panels. Right. So, so with the don't, guy you don't like? Yeah. Oh, well, he's, so he's, he's, he's selling you. He's selling me, yeah. When you said that, I thought it was quite ironic because it's the other way around, yeah. How yeah he's chuckling at himself. However, so good stuff. he's blown up your appliances. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and good one, though. So when the LED revolution came and he got his solar panels and that, and I had a contact at the time at a very well-known, which I can't name, uh, LED lighting company, local to me. And he allowed me to... I didn't say Collingwood. You yeah. said Collingwood. <laughs> I didn't say Collingwood. And his name was Ricky Chavez. Right, and, okay. And he said, he was a sales guy, and went, went in one of the places, different story, went in one of the places, and the guy said to him, if you do the, if you, you know, the Ricky Chavez thing, um, uh, Chavez, I think it was said, he said, you, you've got to do that for us, you, do, you, you sign the order, I'll do whatever you want to do. So you see, it's a sales pitch. So he said, I, I was always doing it. He said, but my sales numbers were brilliant. So you've got to lean into what you can. Lovely guy as well. And he, he came to me and said, I can get these very quality light fittings for a very reasonable price. Okay. So I fitted my entire house in and brought my energy down. And then I had to pay for those, which wasn't a problem. I gave him a little suck as well. I had to give him a little touch to say thank you very much so you can buy your children some nice stuff. And then my neighbour at the time was mildly communicating with me. He wondered what we were doing. And I explained to him that the more energy he saved in his house with his fantastic feeding tariff, because he was back in the day, the more money he would make. So do the calculation. He came back and he asked me how much I paid for my fittings. I might have told him a slightly incorrect price, but I told him a price, and he went and did his own research. It was twice as much for him to buy the same fitting himself. So he asked me on his behalf to purchase them for him. So he bought my light fittings for me in my house. So I thought it was quite nice of him. He bought over 20 light fittings for me. I got all mine for free. So thank you very much. There you go. We call it 1-0. <laughs> right, back, back in with the real story. So yeah, that was that story. So um, yeah, so where do you want to go next? Questions? Yeah. Well, that, that, no, that voltage problem, it's, 
it's not a solar panel producer problem, it's, it's a grid problem. And yeah. The, uh, the ironic thing is the more stuff you take off the grid, the less money they invest in the grid. Yeah. So it's a kind of... Uh, yeah, double edger. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, well, the, the pen fault problem's their problem as well, isn't it? You know, that's lack of investment. DNOs are trying to change their names from DNOs. So DS, DSOs, DS. so from network operators to service operator. Yeah. Yeah, so we're maintaining a system. Is that what the idea is? As a whiff, they're going to want some money to to improve the uh, system, <laughs> not just not just yeah. not based on the amount of power they're transmitting. <laughs> yeah, so. you can't say. Uh, yeah, can't say. Uh, any more questions? You said there's loads coming in. So. Uh, plenty on the Wago. People think yes, yeah, similar tools around, but they haven't got the Wago name on it. Yeah. Uh, obviously, people. Yes, that's a. Uh, hold on, let's have a look here. Dun, dun, dun. Once he sells, I've got to go back here. got a Jesus. Let's have a look. Uh, LEDs. Yeah, I mean, pa panels don't sort of fail. Do they? There's literally, f I'll not say fade away, but it's a, it's a few It's a, a few percentage. Every yeah, year. It's, it's sub sub 1% each, each year. I mean, our, ours are now um, warranted for 86% production after 25 years. So wow. very, very small degradation. I think it's one of those things like a lot of, lot of kind of electronics. If it's faulty out of the box, then it's fault. You know, it's normally faulty on day one, or it works for a long period of time. But but how many things now? You know, nobody would ever sort of have a story nowadays of something being faulty out of the box. So imagine your electronic items. You get yourself a brand new laptop. Maybe it's for your daughter. You know, you, you have to come home from work. There's a little bit of excitement in the house. You open it up. You fire it up. It's just going to work. Everything works out of the box. Do you agree with that? Tellys work out of the box. No need sky dishes. Whatever. You, you, everything works out of the box. None of it, Gordon. No, two hours last night, I was on the phone with Windows, not window, Microsoft, yeah, ordered the laptop out of the box, nothing to boot from. I was like, oh, great, here we go. What was the solution? Uh, well, I was on, obviously, one chat sort of bot thing, and I moved on to another chat bot. Uh, well, I'd send it back. Yeah, out the box, electronic equipment that didn't work. But it is rare. It is, obviously. I'm, I'm normally an Apple person, so I don't have that problem, but once you go back into Microsoft. But you're right, electronics, is, I think they call it the bathtub curve. If we go on the one, there's, a, there's right, either yeah. a lot of uh, yeah. failures at the start when people are getting, but there's a the smooth bit and then the, the increase at the end of life. So there you go. You can I like that, yeah. I'm gonna yeah. Curve. I don't know how you're gonna get that one in, but we'll get it in somewhere. I'll, I'll slide it in somewhere. Yeah, bathtub curve, it's called. Mm. Yeah, like it. Do we want to touch briefly on the uh, just the increase in efficiency as well? We discussed earlier a little ah, bit about uh, uh, yes. Yeah, we will do. Yeah, do you want to go there now? Yeah, so, yeah because efficiency go panels. Obviously, there's a difference, isn't there, between wattage and efficiency? Isn't it? Because everyone, it's almost like you look on those websites, you buy panels. I want the 500 watt panel. Yeah. And there's a big, big kind of psychological thing in there where I think consumers are buying a panel and it, and it gets over a certain threshold, 400, 500 watts, and they want that one. Um, and, and the thing is, you know, there's, there's certain efficiencies. We talked about efficiencies earlier, and it's essentially the, the percentage it will, it will uh, convert from a given, given space, so footprint. So at the minute, typically it's 400 watts. That tends to mean a 21 percent efficiency in the module right people are panicking now yeah okay so yeah, people have just the... everyone's just hit the panic button you so yeah. you're saying that because when you say if my car was only 21 percent efficiency i might as well pour most of the fuel on the floor before i drive it off yeah so if we take, break it down to very like simple one take a one square meter panel that's not how they're made but it's a one square meter panel and it's got a thousand watts shining on it it's yep. going to be able to convert 210 watts to make it 21 percent efficiency it's converting 21 percent of what is hitting it Yes, and what is hitting it didn't cost you anything. Yeah. Because it's exactly. sunlight. So that of the sunlight available on the panel, you converted 21% of that into energy. Absolutely. And that's a little bit different than you know, that sort of panicking statement, isn't it? It's like, wow, well, I've only got a 21% efficient panel. No, based on the sun being the point of which we're, we're ga gauging our efficiency. Exactly. So the kind of progression we're going on is to pack more power into the same into the same square meterage. So if you make an improvement in the efficiency, essentially a 400 watt panel then becomes a 420 or a 430 watt panel because you can get more out of the same area. So when I'm looking at choosing a panel, I should be looking at the efficiency and the size of the panel. Uh, yeah, you've got to look at those two things in context, yeah, yeah. because you could eff effectively, you, know, you can make a panel any size, physical size you want, you'll get a great output from it, but it's got to be in correlation to the efficiency. Yeah. So it's a, yeah, so you can have a, a four, two 400 watt panels, one might be slightly larger than the other, and you'd expect that one to be less efficient than the one, the more compact panel 
should be more efficient. 100%, but I think the, the other thing is that people are getting very wrapped up on very small differences. So they may have an offer for 400 watt panels, but the supplier can only get them 395. And that's gonna make virtually no difference over the lifetime of that system. Um, that's very small, five watts difference per panel. So I'd say to people, you know, try not to get so wrapped up in, in that kind of small difference between a, a panel output. And is it three, say, 395, or have they got a tolerance themselves? <laughs> yeah, so uh, at the factory level, no, nothing will leave the factory lower than, the, than 395. If it's badged up 395, it will always have been tested minimum of that or higher. But we normally have a 5 watt tolerance. So what you're buying as a 395 watt module may actually be 399 or 398. Right. You know, it's, it's got a tolerance of 5 watts. And between those two, because again, if you say I can have a 400 watt panel or I can have a 395 panel, could there be a difference in price there? Could, could, you said psychologically the customer would like the 400 one. Surely there'd be more of a demand for that one. Maybe, maybe this one's a tad cheaper? Could, yeah, could, could be, just purely because it's, it's slightly harder because of the psychological reasons to sell that, that kind of slightly lower output module. So it's not, it's not all bad. You know, if somebody offered me both and said, actually, this one's a little bit cheaper, I might take that deal. Or, or free. Or free, yeah, yeah, yeah I'll definitely yeah, yeah. take that. Yeah, 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 whatever the size, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it. And are you finding that with your customers? Are they savvy about the, the what rating of them? Is it, or do, is it, is it size a panel? What, what's, what's the story you're hearing as they come through the door? Probably, it depends on the customer, really. Sometimes it's price driven. Um, other, other reasons, it's um, type of roof driven. So if you're going in roof or on roof, depending on what, um, style trays you want to use, what you can get hold of. So um, yeah, I'd, I would say it's more roof driven than, than anything else, more, more by the space rather than, you know, like you said, for five watt over a panel, he's not gonna make that much difference. Over 10 panels make a little bit of difference, but still not gonna be make or break on that. That tends to be roof space that limits the install, isn't it? That's the well, you mean can't put it on next doors? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I'll be, it'll be nice and controversial now. So, this is this is a Garyism again. So, when you're having your property rewired, let's make it nice and easy. You're having all the walls changed out, all the floors lifted, cables going in, all the rest of it, and then then you go for an outlet that might be a lower price. Yet all the effort is identical whether you're putting on a top end one or one that's two quid. Okay. I know everybody's got a budget and all the rest of it, but the effort's there. If you've gone to the effort of putting scaffolding up, a rails up, and you've got an expert on your roof, the last thing you want to scrimp on is the actual thing attached to it if you don't have to. I know you might have absolutely stretched yourself to get to that moment, and it might be every penny counts, but just think about it logically. If you've gone for something that you could have just raised the bar slightly, all the efforts in, in, the, in getting there, not getting it down, is it? It's going to come off your van that I ordered on the same day, mm. that it turns up, that sits on my roof for 30, 40, 50 years. I think there's a, you just push yourself to the limit, don't you? What you can really afford when the effort's in the tower yeah, but and the round. A few percent doesn't matter, does it? No, I mean, the quality of your panel yeah. is what I'm saying. You know, you've got up there, it's like having a one pound socket or you can have a better socket. The effort's identical up until the outlet, isn't it? The bit you're actually going to interface with, the bit that sits on the sun, effectively, is what yeah. I would say. No, That's no, a Gary as well. The difference could be 10, you know, 10 pounds. So yeah. 10, 10 pounds, 100 quid yeah. over quite what could be quite a big disparity in quality, I would say. Yeah. yeah. And, and, for, and for yours is all on roof systems, you're railed, aren't you, at uh, Q cells? Is that what we're in? So, so two, two things really. So we, we can certainly primarily, we, we do a lot of on roof retrofit kind of systems, but then there's also third party in roof systems and things which ours can integrate with. Right. So okay. You've got manufacturers who kind of just make in roof systems, but ours can just go with other third party systems to, okay. to be in roof, yeah. That's it. Because it's, it's on roof, mine will be on on roof and all the rest of it. If I ever get to one, yours will be on on roof, I would take it on the rest of it. Um, because on a new build, you've lost all the money, haven't you? So I've got to buy slate, especially around here. I've got to buy perhaps, uh, you know, granite. Whatever you've got to buy to lay on that roof to make it. If you haven't got to put that on, you've already saved that as a cost, haven't you? You've got to get on the roof to lay the roof. So let's not put that, let's put the, the in roof systems in order. Have you seen, in seeing that, especially around here being, are we in Yorkshire or Lancashire? I can never remember. How dare you? We're in Yorkshire, of course. <laughs> it's the same thing, though, isn't it? So, so are you seeing, because obviously I see some beautiful roofs, mm. and I see you know, we're next to a builder that makes some beautiful properties, but surely it's advantageous to put an in-roof system to save the cost of them, them slates. 
I, th I think it's mixed, like you said, to a, a retrofit market, then yeah, you probably are looking at, at on roof. Yep. But if you've got people who are in an unfortunate position where they need to strip the roof to put a new roof on, then like you said, you've already got scaffold up. You know, it's it's there's a, probably a cost saving there because, like you said, you're not having to buy the slates, and you know, you, because your panels then become your actual roof. So, you know, I would say that from that aspect, you you it'd be a no brainer to. Um, I would say that obviously, wouldn't I? Well, that was a, a, yeah, flogging. <laughs> yeah, you use your flogging. There's, there's, yeah. there's a thriving market in second hand storm tiles. <laughs> I bet there is. Yeah, there, yeah. there's always a winner somewhere, isn't it? Yeah. We're, we're not throwing off it in a skip. I mean, it's in a, it's in a bedspread, and as it comes yeah. off, yeah, people yeah. are carrying them down. So does that not lead us nicely into a question we had sent in? So we haven't got a question this week. Remember, we like to ask our audience a question, don't we? So, we can. Uh, yeah. We can. Uh, yeah. Well, that was on on pattern. But before we do that, let's have a little look at the other the home core video which is you're bringing it together isn't it so i think you're one of the few manufacturers that does the panels and the battery system and the inverter and we still yeah we stepped into other space yeah to kind of wrap together the the, yeah. the whole system really so let's just have a little look at what that looks okay. like first, can we? enjoy sustainable living introducing clean energy storage system q home core Q-Home Core stores power made by solar modules and converts that into energy your home can use to charge your EV or to light your house. You can monitor the energy flow of your house through EMS app command, which intelligently maximizes your energy generation through the dynamic Optimizer AI algorithm. Studying your energy usage, weather, and more. Thanks to its high conversion efficiency, there's minimum loss of energy. Q-Home Core is embedded with an automatic transfer switch. In the event of an unexpected power outage, it immediately feeds in backup power to light up the darkness. Homeowners can check system status at a glance and set options for smart energy usage, while installers can provide fast and easy operation and management service using Command Pro. Installers can also easily plug and play Q-Home Core using a simple USB connection during the installation. With the reliable Q-Safe battery by Samsung SDI, you can enjoy a high efficiency conversion rate from solar modules to battery. Additional batteries can be easily installed up to 20.5 kilowatt hour. Q-Home Core has the solar industry's longest standard 15-year product and performance warranty through its proven technology. Enjoy the peace of mind of a single point of contact and warranty for your entire system. For completely clean energy, Q Home Core, Total Energy Solutions. Okay, while you're talking while the march is coming on, that's good. Yeah, so the, the nice things there. So let's just highlight some of the things before we go to the question there. The batteries are on the outside there. It looked a very American or a lovely environment. That's Aust you know, Australia or somewhere like that. You know, yeah. IP rating of the batteries? IP65 rated. And were you expected to, when you had your system to them outside as well? Uh, I did put them outside, yeah. Oh, right, okay. very nicely. Okay. Yeah. Um, in fact, you know, you can actually go and download the command app. The command app that was shown there is just available on the App Store, Android Store, and you can go and look at my house uh, as a test site. Oh. You don't have to log in, you can just download it, um, click the test site, and you can see everything, historical data on there. So. Right. right, okay, so yeah, outside batteries as well. well look at Ross's house and what he does. Yeah, yeah. 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 shift your power comes Put the something. kettle on or charge my car, yeah. Well, we're going to be in there. I'm looking for when he leaves the house. <laughs> 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 There's some batteries on the outside. I wonder how many screws are holding it on. I wonder how quick I can get them off. Yeah, the security issues it around the back of the house? Because obviously if you screw... No, 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 I'm not, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm not joking here. You know, batteries, I would imagine, would be worth taking. Yeah, I mean, You're I don't want to highlight, you know, that too much, to be honest with you. But yeah, I suppose, um, yeah, it would be quite tricky to remove, I think. Fairly weighty. You need to come prepared. Yeah. I, don't, I don't want to give oh, tips. We come told up. How to you, do don't it. See, you don't see many people pinching televisions these days, do you? Because no. you're running down the street with like a 55 inch. It's like, did you see that guy running down the street? Yeah, with but, but you think how many people have been ch chopping EV charging leads and just using the cable for scrap? 
yeah. you know, next to you know six grand's worth of batteries. Well, you wouldn't know you didn't buy yours, but um, the yeah. uh, you know, those people that had to fork their own hard-earned cash out. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, but a cable you can chop it off, put it in your bag. All right. It'll be well, limping about... down the street with. Have you, have you put that battery on the wall? Oh. <laughs> I will be when it gets to my house because it looks I like I'm not getting the other system. Well, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. You had it on the wall upside down three times. So uh, yeah, questions then, Gordon. So uh, interesting business. New business, cleaning window. Uh, cleaning, well, not cleaning windows, that already exists, has done for years. Um, <laughs> Confessions of a solar panel cleaner, is that what yeah, you're doing? The window cleaning business expands the solar panels. Does it make much of a difference? So I, I believe, trying to remember our kind of installation manual from, from memory, that our advice is to do that not during the day uh, and to only use kind of water and a, and a soft brush. Right. So I think under our kind of guide, yeah, certainly possible, but I suppose finding a window cleaner is looking to take a night shift, I don't know. Maybe right. that's a, yeah. mm. And how often, but I mean, does dust really, does it make much of a difference? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, depending on where you're living, absolutely, you know, um, and birds and things like that can all, can all make a big difference. Essentially, in kind of non-dusty standard locations, rain, rainwater can do a fair amount of the, the work for you. But um, when I first started my career, we were near uh, a big cement factory in a place called Ketton in Rutland. It's one of the big, big cement factories there. And they would regularly get kind of plumes of, of smoke and discarded um, stuff on the roof. So you'd have to have more of a, a you know, a, an objective approach to, to getting them clean more regularly, I think. So it's just kind of dependent on your location and what's going on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Richard Brooks says his output increased 10% when he had his clean. So, well, yeah. right, okay. if, you, if you drive around and you see people, I mean, some people have a bit of a problem with birds and that kind of thing and in that instance yeah you, you well first of all you need to get them cleaned and secondly you might need to do something about the, the bird problem but i wouldn't say particularly common <laughs> <laughs> no, just, i'm just going to ask ross's opinion on how to get rid of birds you he thinks he said air gun <laughs> like, ah, okay let's uh let's think of a nicer way to move the birds on shall we yeah okay. yeah 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 okay <laughs> So yeah, in, interesting stuff there then. So, so go back to, we've got a question. It's about the in-roof one, didn't we? We had one come in. So we're gonna do our uh, Ask the Audience. Oh yeah. Yeah, okay, so shall we bring in our question for this week's um, Ask the Audience? Right, okay, are in-roof solar panel systems fire tested? Now it took a while, didn't it? Because to start we had to unpack the question because we weren't quite sure what, what that meant. But it lent us back, didn't it, to our, our thinking that we had with um, LED downlights, okay, and the great work that um, Staircraft are doing at the moment, and we've done some videos with them. So of course, we, we used to a, a room in a property getting on fire and the fire not wanting to spread from that room to another room. So our downlight's been a very important part of maintaining the fabric of the building. And there's times about that, depending on the, the, the roof structure, in order that it doesn't break out and destroy the room above, floor comes down, firefighter issues, etc. And then we're thinking, well, it's on the roof, it's sort of outside, isn't it? It's, it's all the rest of it. But when, when you unpack it and, and you know, all the rest of it, it, it's like, well, I don't know. So we're gonna need to ask the audience, aren't we? So fire testing panels on a roof. So what's your thinking on that? And what do you think they're really asking us? Because we, we, we think you've got the answer for us, but we want to see what our audience thinks on that one. Yeah, so let's get it in. My gut feel is not the panel. Right. Is, is the cable. Cable, yeah, because because we had that with Griff, didn't we? When 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 he said about the cables and all the rest well, of the it. Well, the panel's made it's glass. It's mainly glass and aluminium, isn't it? There's, there's... Yeah. Yeah, you've okay. So fire tested. So it's outside of the. You know, it's like saying I'll test the shed, see if that catches fire and burns <laughs> down. But uh, it's outside of the building. Uh, do you believe that we're going to need to have our system tested against fire? If so, what's your opinion? Um, have you had any experience in this? What are they really asking us? And then hopefully Ross will add some more detail in on what he thinks this is really suggesting to us. But he sent us down a bit of a, bit of a we didn't really understand it, did we? When no. we got it. But once, once Ross, uh, Ross stepped in, okay, but we want to see what our audience thinks because that's one of them questions. Well, I think the, the big problem we've got is a lot of people putting inverters and batteries in loft space. Oh, you would say yeah. that. Is that allowed? Uh, yeah, it's allowed. You've obviously got to be careful, to but don't put the smoke alarm in there. You do or you don't? You should do. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, you, yeah. you said they don't put, yeah, as in they don't, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because mm. obviously if there is a fault, I mean, okay, you, you could have a fire on your roof and it burns through and drops into the house, okay. You could have a meteorite hit your house. Yeah, yeah. 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 Anything you could just happen. really want to know there is a fire, because there's nothing to detect. If you're not putting a smoke alarm up in that area, you wouldn't, you wouldn't know. But it's probably fried anyhow, because you've had a surge and you didn't have an SPD on it. 
<laughs> you had to go there, didn't you? Grade D fire alarms. Why did you have to yeah. mention it? Mm. The Corrigendum. Yeah. We're about the only people that haven't released a video on the Corrigendum that was longer than it needed to be. Yeah. Uh, how, how much of the news do you think it took? 60 seconds? Yeah, that's all it was, wasn't it? No changes. So, anyone coming in telling us what we think the answer should be? Uh, tiles normally provide the fire barrier. That's what we went roof, with. In roof panels have fire resistance properties that match exceed, uh, splash exceed that. Okay, so so that's where we were, weren't it? We were confused between the two. So, we got that roof don't catch fire, does it? Th those tiles do not combust, do they? So, we've got the panel on, and you added the details in for us, did you? Is it really talking about a rail system or not? Yeah, so what, what we typically do is work with a third party mountain tray provider. There's a few different ones out there um, and we'll send the combination of, of their compatible tray with the panel to be f fire tested effectively together as a combination. And then that, that will receive approval or a certification as a, com as a combination. Um, and I think, you know, as far as, far as we're aware, that's the, the MCS guidance is that there has to be a, a test of those, com those combination of materials. So it's not a fire inside the property and the roof catching fire, it's the panel and system catching fire and not entering the building. I believe so. Yeah, yeah that makes what, sense, doesn't it? I mean, it? The, the test is called B-Roof T4. I'm sure you can Google sounds that. Like a, it sounds like a droid off Star Wars, doesn't Something it? Something like that, yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and you can go and look at the criteria. But yeah, there's other, there's other things presented there that you, you already mentioned, things like compatibility of connectors and these kind of things, which throw up other questions which aren't necessarily covered in that fire testing either. Yeah. So there's a, there's a huge, whole all manner of different things there. But in terms of the MCS uh, guidance, it is that combination of tray with the, with the panel. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can buy a system and almost for anyone's panel, but they might that combination might not have been tested together. Yeah, and I think you should check whether it has a, an actual certification for those two two things together. Yeah. And that sounds like the LED system that problems that we've exactly talked about. Same with yeah, fire rated ceiling. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Have to be tested in the ceiling. The ceiling, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So good. So thank you very much. So it came in. We weren't quite sure, so we left it. Obviously, we got an expert in this, but again, it's just nice sometimes to throw the questions at the audience to think. Ah, so you had to go down the same process as we did on that thinking. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. So, good, uh, anything, any other great questions coming in, Gordon? Uh, do you know someone called Daniel Hunt? Is that someone? Yes. Yes, yes. there you go. <laughs> you, yeah. Yeah. Do you want to look at the camera and do that laugh again? <laughs> is that a good thing? <laughs> no, he's, he's one of the guys from work. Oh, so. is oh right. That's why I said Oldfield, the best electrical wholesaler out there. Oh, okay. there, there you go. He's brown nose in yeah. the comments. Is he on the escalator to directorship like yourself? He might be now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's all you have to do, is it? One great comment, you're, you're on yeah. it. Just, uh, yeah, so uh, all good. Anything else, Gordon, you want to pull through there? The NIS, exactly what it is. Uh, yeah, so yeah, some people have it built it because they're making a, an in roof system includes panels. Uh, well, you have a look at that. Shall we go to see the register? See how many people we Yeah, well, you have a look through those. We well, thank you ever so much, everyone who's joined us here on Facebook. Okay, but we're going to do our register off the YouTube. So, those people that are watching us on YouTube have obviously gave a comment. We apologize if you've been commenting on the Facebook page. We haven't yet worked out how to answer both back when we're streaming, but we will delve back into those uh, later on. So, we'll go over to Joe, where Joe's going to do the register for us. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the register. We're not there quite yet, though. We're going to start with the post. Now, we have a lot of posts to go out, but it is going out next week, and Royal Mail will be working overtime, and I'll probably have to, to get some more vans down to Skipton for the amount that is going to go out. Anyway, register time. So we have this week, we have Sean Dempsey, Intruserve, Mark Desparkett Allison, Terry Moore, Carl Robson, Early Years Learning is Fun, James Kane, A Spark One, Richard Cockerline, Andy T, Joe Robinson, watching from his holidays. We have Short Circuit, Mr. Cameron, Andrew Brown, Mad Professor, Sergio Fernandez, Dave Noble, Kathy Cooper, William Brown, Azuri Electrical, Kevin Osborne, Retro Machine, Mark C, Gadget Man, Stephen Skillen, Troy Boy, Pegasus Electrical, and last but not least, Sockets. Now it is time for the prize. So we had the GT time. We'll just flip back to my paper. Uh, yeah, so look, so Darren, the correct time for Darren was 5 minutes 20, and the closest to that was our favourite Sean Dempsey with 5 minutes 55. So Sean Dempsey, you know the drill. Go to the Get Involved link in the comments and fill out the form, and we'll have your prize out to you next week. So, yeah, we're over there, we're over here. So, yeah, thank you very much. So, Sean, just a, a quick thing for you. It, it's not my personal responsibility to get that prize. That is the one of, obviously, um, 
Junior's going to be doing the post, so uh, messaging me on my personal phone or ringing me asking where your prize is. We'll not get it to you any quicker, so I just thought I'd give you the heads up there, and it will be Joe's responsibility to send it out to it, and I apologise in advance for you not receiving your prize. Okay, so that seems how it works. That's good. So that, they, nobody was close really then, were they? <laughs> so we were all over the show. With it. They thought you were both going to be quicker than you were. <coughs> yeah, yeah, but 50. Mm. Yeah, it was the closest time. That was nowhere near. Yeah. So all good. It is all good, but yeah. it is now quarter to ten. I know, and we've been we've been dribbling on. So we'd like to thank everybody. So remember, you've got the end credits, and if them end credits have been changed, you might find your name appears on it. And what was really nice there when we went through the register, and there is more people than that, we have to slim the register down because it would take half the show to do it, is that those names keep coming up. We, we really genuinely thank the people that look forward to hopefully every two weeks us bringing you these streams, giving us the great comments and the feedback in order to drive us onto other streams. It is appreciated. And now hopefully we're building a similar community over on Facebook. But we couldn't do it unless we had the great support of the four following brands to help us bring this show to you fortnightly. It doesn't just make itself, does it? You know, there's a lot of effort that we have to put into it. And we love doing it. But we love the fact that the headline sponsor for this is the Laseco Group, the people that bring you uh, Sync EV, uh, as well as the BG brand and Laseco Lighting. We also have the wonderful people down in the Essex, the Italy of the North, the South, North, North, North. South, East Essex. East Essex. That's in the south, isn't it? Yeah. I've moved up here and I say, Braintree. yes, yeah. Braintree. Yeah, we'd like to thank the great people at Luden Palazzoli for supporting us with the wonderful consuming unit we use on the race wall. We'd also like to thank My Energy. Are they double award winners? I think they've recently yeah. won what I saw on LinkedIn there. They're winning awards left, right and centre and they've always been great supporters. They were one of our very early videos that we ever made. And then we've got great people down at Doncaster Cables who've been obviously picking your ear about uh, solar and battery recently as well. And Aaron and the team down there that help support the cables that we use on the race wall as well. Mm. Fantastic. Of course. Our fantastic guests, yeah, for Q cells as their the first solar, the first yeah manufacturers of solar got in. I think yeah, uh, it's pleasure to be here. Yeah, I mean, it's been really useful for us. Yeah, we've learned loads, and we'll sound like experts. Uh, I'll never will. Well, <laughs> yeah, well, we've got a few good sayings that we're going to be using. Yeah, no. Just yeah. think about it as you're buying your energy. 20 years in advance. You're investing in your own future. And again, if they need anyone from Joe Public to have a free solar battery, an integrated system to trial it for you, make sure you throw my name forward. I'm prepared to take one for our team in order to help your great brand out. Very and again, if you've got any spare panels going out the back door, you know, on them Saturday morning jobs, sling them on the van. We can do some sort of deal. Yeah? Stick some grommets yeah, in it. Yeah, absolutely, well. mate. Yeah, 32 <laughs> yeah. mil grommets. Last 30 mil grommets. 32 yeah. mil grommets. Obviously, yeah. thanks for support from uh, Oldfield Electrical. Uh, oh, ahead of the there. curve in terms of uh, what they do locally with solar. And, it's always and, good and there we have. There. Yeah. Oh, there we go. What were they called? What were the Muppets? What were they called? They were Waldorf and Stadler. Stadler. <laughs> there they are. <laughs> yeah, get the show off. <laughs> Had enough. Yeah, look at them. It's the latest they've been up for a long time, isn't it? They're normally in bed, had something soft to eat, maybe a bit of mints. I think they get it caught in the teeth, and then uh, they're in bed by half eight. Yeah, nine o'clock at the latest. Uh, Oval Tina and good night from them. So it's good night from them, and it's going to be good night from us. Make sure you stay until the very, very end because you'll get our end credits. You may find your name up there. I've got a funny feeling this week's winner, Sean Dempsey, will probably appear in those credits as well as maybe some family members. I imagine we've got a new job title and all the rest of it. We'd like to thank everybody that makes this possible, including our wonderful guests. We're back in two weeks, and who have we got in two weeks just to give us a... Yeah, we've got some lighting designers in. Oh, London, Gary. That sounds like that's not a bit of me, does it? Maybe I'll give it a body swerve. Maybe, maybe next time out, Gordon will have a, a mystery uh, co-presenter. So good luck seeing Rick next week. Okay, thank you very much. See you in two. Thank you very much, Facebook. Thank you very much, YouTube. Hit the credits.